la sucette. Just want to greet everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So good to be here once again in His presence. All the visitors, the strangers, fellow brothers and sisters from Mr. Tabernacle. We are so happy to gather here once again in His presence. Saints of like precious feet come to honor and give thanks to our Lord. Just want to greet precious brother and pastor there, Brother George, and his little and his group that came out with him as well. It's an honor to have you all in our midst. We all have so many gifted musicians and singers and to hear you all, amen. Also, from Divine Love Tab Tabernacle, Brad Didier and his, his, his little group as well. Part of his church, they are also looking in via online, via the stream. We also want to greet the saints out there as well in Streamland, saints there in Tobago, saints in Grenada, Dominica, St. Kitts. Precious sister in Guadeloupe, you have seen it out in the West and the rest of the wider world. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet and sing, He alone is worthy. Short announcement just before we start. We have the washroom all the way to the back. We have the brothers there in the back. They will guide you all with any assistance that is needed. So once you step out, you just speak to any one of the brothers there and they will they will assist you. Let's all sing. He alone is with Found worthy. The Lamb took the 
the book. That's why we can see your name. Amen. Just let the musicians play. Let's all lift our hands and worship. Amen. We didn't just come to, to meet up our brothers and sisters who we haven't seen in a long time. We enjoyed, we enjoyed the fellowship. But it's all because of him. And that's why we are grateful. That's why we could sing these songs. That's why we could honor his name. Because he alone is worthy. And we are so thankful for that. Amen. Just want to ask our precious brother Marvin to come and open us in a word of prayer. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory, Lord Father, to be back in your divine presence, Father. Lord, to give you praise, thanks for your love and your grace towards us, Father. Lord, we come once again in your throne, O oh God of grace, asking for your strength, you said, in time of need, Father. Lord, we come bringing, O oh God, a song leader in your presence, Lord, songs of praise, songs of thanksgiving, Father. Lord, to lift our spirit, O oh God, up into the right atmosphere, O oh God, that your word could come forth. Lord, your servant could come, O oh God, and bring your unsearchable riches, Father. Things, O oh God, that pertain into us, Lord, to pertain into our promises that you have promised us, O oh God, that we will walk in it, Father. Lord, you have your way, Lord, even the musicians, Lord God, may you bless them, Lord, the singers, may you anoint them tonight, Father. Everything that will be said and will be done, Lord, Father, will be done in your name that will be glorified, will get praise, and will not fail, O oh God, to know that you is the one, O oh God, who called us, Father, and give us this great responsibility in this dark hour, Father. Lord, to wind up this great commission, Lord, and we want to be in the right mind, right attitude, that we, O oh God, will not miss what you want to do in our life and our midst, Father. Father, have your way, Lord. We put this whole service in your hand, Father, to the end of it, Lord. The strangers, the visitors, the brothers on the other side, Lord, from the Ephesian tabernacle, come to worship with us tonight. Lord, our precious brother Didier, if can land and see to come to be with us, Lord, may you bless him, his family, oh God. To the end, Lord God, we not feel to give you praise and thanks. Have your own way, Lord, in order name by your precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You turn around, you greet each other. Tell them God bless. Let's see the smiling faces in his presence.
Lord said, we are together again. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. We are together again. In one accord. In one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is going. Something good is in store. Is in store. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. Oh, we are together again. Together again. Just praising the Lord. We are together again. In one accord. Something good is going to happen. Just praising the Lord. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. We are together again. In one accord. Oh, something good is going to happen. We are together again, just praise. We are together, just praising the Lord. We are together again, in one accord. Something good is going to happen. Some together again just praising the Lord hallelujah hallelujah how we want to be lift up on that seven mountain amen thy steadfast love O Lord extends to the heaven and thy faithfulness unto the cloud I feel the cold wind of judgment blowing the northerner is coming. The great white eagle must appear anytime now. That's what we're looking for, amen? We want to be lifted up on that seventh mountain. Let's all sing this, let's sing this song, amen? The seventh mountain. Bear me on your eagle wing so strong. And bear me on your eagle's wing so strong. Lord, lift me up on that seven mountain. Cause I feel in my heart it's a place. Cause I feel in my heart it's a place where I belong. Thy steadfast love, O oh Lord. Oh, thy steadfast love. Extend unto the heaven, extend to the and thy faithfulness unto the clouds, unto the clouds. I feel the cold wind of judgments blowing, wind of judgment. The Narana is coming, the Narana, the great white eagle, eagle master pen. Anytime now, oh, to lift me up, Lord, lift me up on that seven mountain, mm. and bear me on your eagle's wing so strong. Oh Lord, lift me up on the seven mountain. Cause I feel in my heart it's a place where I belong In my heart there's a desperation In my heart there's a desper An anointed expectation That a paradox Must be performed Must be performed For the deep in me is calling and we know where there, wherever there's a deep, 
there must be a deep to respond where divine love and power love and power just take supreme control Lord lift me up on the seventh mountain oh. and bear me on your eagles On the seventh mountain, cause I feel, I feel in my heart it's a place where I belong. I'm on my ash sheep waiting. I'm on my ash sheep for your divine promise, for your de your response to my faith, refer to my faith in your word. Trusting in you, my savior. I'm still trusting in you, my savior. Or oh, absolute forever. Ever that you'll finish the work in me. You have begun to lift me up. Oh, that's heaven, my. Bear me on your eagle's wings so strong. Lord, lift me up on that seventh mountain. Cause I feel in my heart it's a place where I belong. This is our testimony. I'm looking beyond my affliction. I'm looking beyond. Do a perfect restoration. A new body. A new body. Thou hast prepared for me. Prepared for me. I'm tired of this dimension. For I'm tired of this. Oh, of its chaos and confusion. And con a new heaven. And a new earth. That's what we long to see. That's why we can all sing, Lord, lift me up, lift me up on that seventh mountain. Oh, yeah. Bear me on your eagle's wings so strong. Lord, lift me up, Lord, lift me up on that seventh mountain. Cause I'm feeling my heart, it's a place where I belong. Lord, lift me up on that seventh mountain. Yeah, beyond your eagle's wings. Oh, Lord, lift me up. Seven mountain, cause I feel in my heart. I feel in my heart. It's a place where I. Yes, I feel in my heart. It's a place for I feel in my heart. It's. A I feel in my heart. It's a place where I belong. For I feel in my heart. It's a place where I belong. place where we want to be amen hallelujah hallelujah that paradox it must be performed amen we, we, we always look into his promises because we know he's not slack concerning his promises it must be perfect it must be fulfilled that's why we are walking in, 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 in this this evening amen how we are so grateful to be here again just want to ask you all to have your seat as we invite our precious brother Jonathan and the group there from Ephesians Tabernacle to come and sing with us. You put your hands together. A, a, a very gifted bunch of believers. Oh, brother Ruben. Brother Ruben, sorry. 
Jonathan and the getter. <laughs> On the base. As I get ready, let's all sing. You deserve the glory and the honor. You deserve the glory and the honor. Have the honor. Lord, we lift our hands. We lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. In mm. worship, as we praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There's no one else like you. No one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one. You are great. Oh, you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be here tonight. I, mean, I want to greet everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we, um, it forms my lot to do a special for you all this, this afternoon. And you know, um, Mikey was just asking me what was special to do. I had a couple of minds in mind. I didn't make up my mind. But you know, he made up a mind for me. He, tell me, he asked me if we could do Super Church. So this, this song I, I want to sing here is not my composition. It's my brother's. Um, Zoe. So... The title of the song is Super Church. You believe we are Super Church? Yeah. Super class of people? Yeah. The Holy Spirit said one night to pick up your pen and write. There's a message to the church that you must bring. Tell her how much I love her. She's my queen and I'm a king. To keep pressing on. For soon I'm coming Well tell her she's a super race Tell her she's a super church She will do the greater works But she has filled with the mind of Christ Not carried away by the serpent's lies she cannot be deceived Cause she has the said the Lord Or she'll keep still She's in love with him And she'd only do his will But she's in love with him And she'd only do his will The mystery of it all The mystery of it all it's that the word is in the pride 
And she knows what he wants done with his word As the word was in Mary So shall it be formed in me As a headstone descends upon the body Tell her she's a super race Tell her she's a super church She will do the greater works She is filled with the mind of Christ Not carried away by the serpent's lies She cannot be deceived, oh no Cause she has the said the Lord Or she'll keep still She's in love with him And she'd only do his will She's in love with him And she'd only do his will The divine architect Has been building his masterpiece But at Nicaea She died by Roman Greeks so with resurrection power He starts to build another And she cannot fall She is off the original seed How many believe that? Tell her she's a super race Tell her she's a super church She will do the greater works She has faith mind of Christ not carried away by the serpent's lies she cannot be deceived she has the said the Lord or she'll keep still she's in love with him and she'd only do his will She's in love with him and she'd only do his will. Let's hear the drums. Tell her she's a super race. Tell her she's a super church. She will do the greater works. She is filled with the mind of Christ. Not carried away by the serpent's lies. She cannot be deceived But she has the said the Lord Or she'll keep still She's in love with him And she'd only do his will She's in love with him And she'd only do his will Yeah, she's in love with him and she'd only do his will. Amen. God bless you. All. Hallelujah. 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 Such anointed, gifted servants of the Lord operating in their place. We are so happy to be blessed by that. Amen. To see God's gift in operation. It, I mean, I, I'm there and I accustomed to seeing these brothers singing online and seeing them here in, in, in our little small space with Spark. And you know, just to show that, see everyone in one mind and one accord. These brothers, as far as I know, this song wasn't practiced with our musicians because they're renting and telling Danny and stop now, drums now. And, and we know it wasn't practiced, but everyone just operating in their place. They're just doing what they have to and bringing this gem out in perfection. We, we, we are so blessed by that. Amen. May God continue to bless you, my precious brother. Jonathan as well. God bless you all. Such a wonderful ministry, amen. Hallelujah. Just want to ask Sister Leslie Ann from Divine Love Tabernacle to come and sing for us as well. 
That's great. Amen. It is time to worship the Lord. <laughs> um, the song is, you know the song, so you sing it with us. It's, it's a congregational. Amen. God bless you all. It's a privilege to be here. God bless you, Sister Yvette. <laughs> seemed empty the fire that she had was gone and she could no longer sustain her family a widow with nothing a widow with nothing that was her story with the creditor approaching in the most desperate time of need, she stood all alone, no friends, no family. They read their charges. You cannot pay your debt, your children now become a ransom, and they shall be taken. She cried, Lord, I have nothing left. I'm a widow with nothing. That was her story But When God heard a desperate cry He came down from his home He quickly came to her As he heard the cry of his own He led her to find Elisha The prophet for that hour Go. Thus said the Lord God had already told me Your troubles will be gone The story of your life Will be different from now on Bring every joy you can find God will transform your life The little oil that you have Will be multiplied Even now Right now your children would never be slaves and you will never be in debt anymore god has chosen you and in your home he will work a paradise in the house that was empty now has everything the widow who was weeping can rejoice and sing if there was nothing today you can have it all step up by faith and see god multiply your oil now your Shine your light each day. You touch the hem of his garment as he passed your way. All who saw you suffer at the hands of death now sees the blessings of the Lord. Even now, right now, Lazarus was dead. Send a message to the Lord, he whom you love is sick. Then they waited two days. Death came and claimed him. They laid his body in a tomb. The Jews came comforting, expressing their sympathy. To Martha and Mary, yet still Jesus tarried. All for his glory. Now three days have come and gone. Martha heard Jesus has come, and so she ran quickly to meet him. Lord, if you've been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, thy brother shall rise. Then she replied, 
Lord, in the resurrection, what he said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. Then, Martha run to Mary, the master is come and call it for thee. Just as before she ran, she fell at his feet. Jesus groaned and began to weep. Where have you laid him? Then he said, take, take you away the stone. Appearances deceived by faith, only believe. Stand still and you will my glory see. From the grave come forth, yet can have no hold. All of your filthy garments, you need no more, even now. shall surely die but i paid the price to ransom my bride your enemy is dead i have bruised his head you're a living paradox for six thousand years that has ruled and reigned now in this bright age life is restored again now go claim the ones i've called you to redeem just speak my word of life and it will be in this rapture season things that ought to be Modern events have been made clear by prophecy. He's leading to communion in that land sublime. That's the fullness of redemption. For six thousand years, death has ruled and reigned. Now in this bright age, life is restored again. Now to claim the ones that call you to redeem. Just speak my word of life, and it will be in this rapture season. Things that ought to be. Modern events have been made clear by prophecy. He's leading to communion in that land supply. That's the fullness of redemption. Oh, and this house that was empty now has everything. The waiter who was weeping can rejoice and sing. When there was nothing, today you can have it all. Step up by faith and see God multiply your rod. Now your fire burning, shine your light each day. You touch a hem of his garment as he passed your way. All who saw you suffer at the hands of death now see the blessings of the Lord. Even now, right now, even now, right now. Hallelujah. Come a child, Spirit of God. I'd like the group to come forward as well. Hallelujah. We believe Jesus is here, amen. It's God and His people, the super sign. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we are here this tonight to worship and praise His holy name and his, invite His presence. Amen.
Let's play. 
Until daybreak, you know, but we still living in our body at time, so you know, we have to do everything in time, you know, uh, and by light, you know. So, just want to give God thanks and praise for the atmosphere, you know, the songs, you know, you know, to think of our brother, he had that cluster song in his mind, and the Holy Spirit just selected that one, you know, and 
said, this is the right one I want you to sing the first time in Mispa. Because this is what these people believe. You know, the super church, the super race, the invincible army. We must come into that. The prophet said, and we are in the happening of it right now. You know, and we believe that. No, we are weak church, a defeated church, and tell me we have to take that. No, he promised a super church, an invincible army. You know, when you, when you see these things happening, you know we are in the vision. And everybody here has been touched by the hand of God and seen the mountain range. And so we are in the happening, we are in the vision. Everything is set in place. You know, the prophet said, this boy is red, run me out of Finland. And we can see this boy rising tonight with power in his wings. A mighty marching army, a joy army, a easy kill army. What a mighty God we serve in this hour. You know, when you watch this, you think this is a well-month plan out meeting. And we plan for the Ephesian tabernacle to come. And we plan for the divine love tabernacle to come. It wasn't planned out. We was in the meeting, my brother, Rata and George, last week. Thursday, and a couple of the believers said they want to come up next week, Wednesday. Amen. We didn't know Brother Didier would be here. Amen. And when Big Brother Didier came Friday, we already know he preaching my brother, by Brother Tornell. So we thought maybe he going back home Monday or whatsoever, you know. So I went outside after the service Friday. And I asked him, I said, Brother Didier, when are you going back? And he said, Wednesday. So I don't realize when the kind of out of the question to ask. But we being men, I think it would have been nice for him to come and sit with us and have a little brother's fellowship. You know, so I invite him. I say, would you like to have a little brother's fellowship with us? You know, to sit with us and just talk, you know, as brothers. You know, and he say, yeah, that will be great. And when I realize he accepted it in such a polite way, I kind of train the Wednesday. I say, I need to feel free, you know, and you want to preach us Wednesday. You know, he said, well, I'm a love slave for the Lord. You know, I don't mind doing it. And that's how he ended up preaching, coming to preach here tonight. So it's not like we call Brother George and, and we call and we plan this meeting. Everything that's happening here tonight is spontaneous. And as God said this, you know, because, you know, as he, the song was singing, Sister Leslie, and then, you know, the resurrection cannot take place until Martha and Mary united. Until the fragmented body come together. You know, all, all, all the time is, is who signing for divorce and who want to divorce and they want to leave the wife and the wife want to leave the husband. But when they went up in the attic and they find a booty, that booty unite them together. They know we have something in common this morning. And we are in the attic this tonight. And we find in the booty and realize we are something common tonight. We are this treasure in earthen vessel tonight. We have to forget all that, that law of divorcement and realize we, this fragment body, have to unite because we receive one seed from the prophet of Elijah. And he, he tried to bring it to the Catholic and the Presbyterian and all these people and it couldn't achieve. And this date must have a bride revival. It must have a people rising in this hour. Samson feeling his locks growing back out. As that little boy leading him to the pillars. Prophet said that little boy was the eyes to Samson. The here type the church, Samson type the church, and that little boy also type the church. It's just like Jesus sitting on the, the throne, he said, and, 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 and he that sat on the throne, and the lion and the tribe of Judah, and the lamb take the book, all three are one. That is how we feel tonight. Glad to our precious brother, Ratan George, with us and the Ephesian Tabernacle with us tonight. Good, good to be united by the word and not united by, you know, I was working for him and he, he gave me an extra salary and I hope we end up becoming friends. You know, we united by the word, by God's grace. You know, and you know, since he heard about what happening, you know, he always asking about me. He wanted to see me, and you know, we always have some fellowship. You know, and as a person that I always like to go by my mother, I know there she was in the message since in the in the seventies, and when we go and we hear the historical part of the message, it does make you put pieces of the puzzle together. 
you know, and sometimes when you meet people, you want to find out the historical party. You hit on one side, and when you hit on the next side, then it's up to you to choose with a thinking man filter what you want and what you don't want. But you need all the pieces to put the puzzle together. You know, and we are so happy, you know, to get all the pieces where you can put the puzzle together. We're glad to have them here with us tonight. You know, we trust that the meeting will be a blessed tonight. I know they didn't know that I was not going to preach because they, uh, they was already said they want to come whether who preaching or not. They wanted to come this Wednesday. You know, but tonight is Brother Didier Kalambai from Seattle. You know, Divine Love Tabernacle. I truly appreciate him tonight, our precious Brother Didier. You know, just before he come, I want to read a quote here from the prophet. The supernatural. Prophet speaking on the supernatural 1956, the 29th or the first month. He said, It's the attitude of the people that bring the result. And if we had the right attitude tonight, the result of every sick, every afflicted, every captive going to set free. He says, The right attitude. And if you come to sit down to hear, you know, what the brother going to say or what all thing here, you know, is the right attitude. Say the attitude of the people. God wants to give it, but it's the attitude of the people that bring the result. That's the reason at Pentecost, they had to go into an upper room and pray until the Holy Ghost came. Because they got in one place and one accord. It's the atmosphere that brings the result. Do you believe that? Do you believe that tonight? If you want to see result tonight, get in the right atmosphere. If you want to have a revival, get in the spirit of a revival. If you want to have deliverance, get in the spirit of deliverance. If you want salvation for your family, get in the spirit of salvation. It's the atmosphere you get into. He said, let every man and, and woman in this building, this tonight, he said this morning, but tonight, boy and girl, little boy, little sister, little brother, every man, every woman in this building tonight, Get everything from your mind. Put aside, lay aside everything. All the excitement, lay aside that. But the Lord Jesus, and believe that he is standing present right now. As the song said, Jesus is here right now. Get everything from your mind. Don't watch your know, flesh. Don't watch you know, a 16 element. Look beyond the veil. And believe Jesus is here right now. Using a gift to lift my, my faith. To believe in the atonement. Because all our redemptive blessing is locked up in the atonement. And a gift is only to point you to the finished work. Gift. The brother, I have a gift to give you something. He had a gift to build your faith and your expectation oh, yeah. for you, what you want tonight. Amen. That's right. Amen. He said, believe that Jesus is standing right now. And you will see something happening. He said, and you will see something happening that will cause headline in the newspapers in the morning. He said, you will see headline. Something happening that will cause headline, message headline in the papers tomorrow. That there's a mighty deliverance taking place in Mispa. This little boy is alive, a witness, and he's handed over to the mother. Something, a message headline. You want that this morning, tonight? A message headline. Let's just stand to our feet. He said in the newspapers in the morning, he said, that's right. It's the atmosphere. You know, and that's what we want. As a, you have an atmosphere of faith. You know, you, you, you have a, a pulsation of faith to pull up on that word. As a brother, you know, will come and, and preach, he can see faith falling. You know, the seed of faith in the right bed and ground to produce the promise. You know, and we are under expectation tonight. Even after our precious brother Didier preach because we don't want to take up his time. You know, we'll just ask Brother Ratan George to come and greet you all and because he longed to see you all a little while. You know, you all had been in the loft there hiding. You know, and you know, good, you know, he could get a little peep in the loft to see what Elijah doing. 
you know, you don't stretch twice already, but you have one more stretch, you know, so you cast it too long, you know, just get a little peep, and when Elijah don't raise this boy, then you'll be bringing this boy to a public show. Oh, yes. You know, this boy is not an individual. This boy is a mystical body of Jesus Christ. Let's just sing and worship as our brother. Jesus is here right now. To get uh, ready to invite our precious DDA Columbi from Seattle, Divine Love Tabernacle. Precious brother, we love, we respect. We respect his hum humility. You know, I look up to him as a big brother in the message. Every time he'll come to church, you know, the way he'll conduct himself, he earn our respect tonight. The stand he took for the word and the prophet said, take inside with Jesus. We see a man with character. He didn't take side with a man. He takes side with Jesus. And how we feel free our first, you know, guest speaker in Miss tonight. He breaking record, breaking history. You know, this going down in history. Our first guest speaker tonight. Let's just bow our head. Father, we give you thanks. For this blessed assurance you had given our heart into our heart, Father. This treasure you had put in earthen vessel. Lord, that tonight we could come as brothers. Lord God, keeping this brother, brotherly covenant alive among us. Lord God, putting our shoulder to the wheel. Not Lord for human show, Father. But Lord, we know you have achievement on the earth. Lord, to get every elect that whose name is written in the Lamb Book of Life in position, Father. Because you say, when that last one come in Christ, not when that last one get baptized, not when that last one come to church, but when that last one can recognize the position in Christ, that book of redemption will be closed. Lord, and tonight as you had given us this little space of time, Lord God, to share what we have in our earthen vessel. Lord God, this treasure, hidden treasures in this earthen vessel. We pray tonight, Lord, as our brother will come. Lord God, and share this treasure has given us this faith and expectation. As scripture said, while Peter yet speak these words, the Holy Ghost fell. Lord, we pray, Lord, tonight. We know our brother is a spiritful man. Lord, and when the word that just proceed from his mouth will be your word, we know that is deity and supreme control. Deity speaking to us through your word tonight. Lord, we pray that every spirit will be under subjection for your honor and your glory. And our brother tonight will have free course to preach and bring deliverance to your people. We ask these things in another name, but in your holy and precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Our precious brother, Didier Columbine. Yeah. 
last time as we believe it, let's sing it to Jesus. Jesus is here right Father, we know that we, we, we can't bring your presence down. You come in respect of your own word because you said we're two or three assembled in your name. There you are. Father, we acknowledge that you're here tonight, but we want this presence to do something for each one of us, Lord. We know it's not by might nor by power. It is by your Holy Spirit alone. So blanket us tonight and fill every soul. Fill us to overflowing. Overtake us and just commit we commit the service and each life to your care tonight believing that you're here to accomplish your purpose to advance your cause and to be the only one to receive the glory the honor and the praise we commit the service to you and the assembly and everyone in attendance for your glory and your honor in the precious holy name of our lord and savior jesus christ the king amen Man, or like you just sit for a moment just to uh, greet you all uh, officially in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is uh, uh, an honor and a privilege to stand here to minister to the assembly of Mr. Tabernacle. I was kind of surprised to hear that our brother George is here. I met him on my last uh, trip, so the one before last. Uh, certainly good to see him, and uh, that song was beautiful from your son. Uh, I didn't catch the name, but uh, we, we believe the bride is a special class of people, you know. She is a super race. She is the masterpiece. She is the one to carry the plan and the word for this hour. Uh, the message was sent to us to help us believe who we are, amen? And we are not becoming believer. We're always believer. That's why when it came across our path, we couldn't help it. Uh, it was like duck to the water, the prophet said. It was like uh, uh, the little eagle recognizing Mama Eagle. See, it, it, it's built in, the, this reality. We came packing it. Uh, we didn't have to uh, pray down. We didn't have to uh, work hard for it. It was given from before the foundation of the world. So we appreciate him putting us in such a special uh, class and being the last of the race here. To, to finish the course and to see all the plan and all the promise of God becoming real. So we truly appreciate that. And of course, uh, I was uh, realizing and being uh, told that it's the first time to have a, a visiting minister speak here. I consider that a great honor. Uh, not that uh, we are around trying to find a place to preach because I debated whether I should even uh, let Brother Nigel know I was coming to the country. We came for a miss wedding. Um, at home, you preach uh, every week, two or three times, and then between you have meetings. So when you get away like this, you just want to be uh, uh, below the radar and just come and sit in the back and be refresh yourself. But uh, it's my uh, duty today to stand here. I trust that we can say something to uh, encourage you, inspire you, and help you move on with the Lord in your journey. And uh, I, I, I can't preach anything new because it's all in the message, it's all in the Bible. Maybe we just polish a stone or two to allow you to uh, be able to use it when you need it to just uh, uh, drive that Goliath completely out of your life. Amen? Amen. So I'm just here to put my shoulder to the wheel and I know a congregation like this and then you have a senior pastor sitting there and then a young man here was set under. Uh, the, the word for a long time I've listened to him uh, very scriptural people and very Bible based and very message based it's a little bit intimidating but I'll, I'll just take my intimidation and put it on the Lord Jesus Christ and tell him to take my nervousness away 
and because I believe he knows how to handle these things, amen? So you'll also pray for me and don't sit there studying me because I'm not going to say anything new. I'm not going to say anything that you don't know. So don't waste time studying me, trying to understand where I'm coming from, where I'm going. I'm coming from Genesis into Revelation. I'm coming from faith is the substance to communion. I'll be right in there somewhere, so I'm not going to be out of there. I'll be right in there so you can relax and be comfortable and just uh, help me preach because I also have a plane to catch at 30 minutes after midnight. So if you listen fast, I'll speak fast and we'll all move fast. How's that for a plan? Amen. God bless you. You stand to your feet. We'll read our scripture. And I want to take it, if you don't mind, in uh, Exodus uh, chapter 13. And we'll begin our reading at verse. Um, let's just begin at verse um, Exodus 13. Am I still on there? Thank you. Begin with verse 17. Exodus 13, 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistine, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Now watch how God is, is mindful of the people. Um, I'd like to get my monitor, perhaps I just did. God is conscious of the fact that uh, these people did not come from the Egyptian military academy. They were not uh, recruiting Pharaoh's army. These were former, they were bricklayer, they were mason. And he knows that if he takes them directly into the land of promise and they have to meet the enemy and begin to fight, he said they will, uh, they will give up too quickly. So he said, let's peradventure the people repent when they see war. Repent means they turn back, begin to go back to Egypt because war is gruesome. War is never something enjoyable. War uh, causes death and destruction and you have losses and you have victories. So God knows that he said, no, I'm not going to take them that way. God led the people about to the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. The language there is interesting because Harnessed means God held them like under harness to control them, to keep them to himself, to move them according to his pace and according to his own divine GPS. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped in Ethan in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and led them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. And the English there is kind of strange when he said to lead them the way. Uh, not to lead them in the way or to lead them by the way, but to lead them the way because he himself was the way. Amen. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. May the Lord bless his precious word. We'll just pray, Father. We thank you that your word has been read, but we depend upon you for the context and the inspiration and the understanding, Father. May you just have your way, precious Jesus, as we dedicate ourselves again to you for the benefit of your people and your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have your seat and may God bless you. Certainly, I want to thank our precious uh, Brother Nigel for giving us the opportunity to stand here. It is indeed a, a first, and I trust and I pray that uh, God honors his decision and his leadership in allowing us to stand here to uh, put our shoulder to the plow. A great work is being done here. 
in simplicity and perhaps in the shadows of the great cathedral, but it's always that way. God sometimes uh, want to go uh, in uh, Bethlehem, but even Bethlehem had no room in the inns, you know? And so he had to go uh, in the hill country where the shepherd somewhat vacated the stable space. So uh, he found it and he was able to uh, give Mary a birth in a place that was a little bit insignificant by the standards of those days, even the standard that Joseph and Mary was looking for. It was not exactly what was available because, you know, uh, Bethlehem itself, though it was a prophesied city and the city of David, a great uh, potential and great uh, prophecy, but yet uh, it was so full because of what was taking place in that time, you know, the sense that pushed everybody back into the home country and then by the time Mary moving slow and uh, so pregnant and so heavy, you see uh, Joseph could not really uh, put that, uh, uh, that animal on cruise control. He had to pace it slowly so that she does not suffer too many bumps and all these different things. But by the time they made it, it was late and all the space was occupied. But yet the word was not stopping because there was no uh, availability in the inns of Bethlehem. But uh, God had a provided place. And that place will seem humble, will seem insignificant. But you know, God is so great that he loves to do things that are opposite of what man thinks is great, you know. Because man is so small when he thinks of great things. He imagined them with such grandeur and such uh, a splendor, such a, a decorative, impressive uh, paraphernalia. But God is so big, he feel all time and space. And he's so big that heaven couldn't contain him. He's so big that all of the unstoppable, infinite universe could not contain him. That the only greater things you can do from then on, when you're so big, the only greater thing you can do is make yourself small. Yeah. Because when you're the biggest of them all to infinite, where can you go? When you get there, the only greater thing is become small. Then that becomes the greatest thing. So the prophets say, when there's a nothing in the beginning, God was in the nothing. God is in the nothing. We think of everything, but God say, when there's nothing, God is in the nothing. And when it looks so small until you can't see it, God is said, there I am. So he made himself so small until he became a blood cell. He could hide himself in a virgin womb. And then uh, even Joseph couldn't handle it because the way it came, it was so unorthodox. But you're still by the word. Yes. See? Because when God is bringing his word to pass, he will confirm it with supernatural visitation so that those who know that it's given for them, it's about them, they'll be the only one to know that this is a reality. She cannot prove that she had a conception by not knowing man. She could not prove it. But she knew that what had taken place. And when uh, the census was taking place, she did not understand that a prophecy at all said Bethlehem, that it was in the hill countries, not in the city and the main place. Because God was going to make himself small. He said, in a stable, yes. Why? To make the theologian uncomfortable. But a shepherd will feel it normal. See? Because Bethlehem, yes, a great place. Yes, recorded in the scripture, because Micaiah had said, uh, the, the list in Judah, out of thee shall the governor come out. And that revelation was available for everybody to read. And of course, when the wise men came from everywhere, and they wanted to find the place where that word was being fulfilled, following the great star. But yet, because they come from Babylon, they end up in Jerusalem. Because everybody thinks that if it's happening, it has to be in Jerusalem. It's still the concept today. It has to be in those places. And of course, when you're coming from Babylon, that will always be your ideas. That it has to be in the place where everybody think it is. But that's not where God put it. But they thought that's where it was. And by the time they ask, well, everybody say, well, we can find out. And they had the big first Bible convention. You know, the first Bible convention was the Magi and Herod and all the priests. 
And they made a supernatural scriptural discovery that it's going to be in Bethlehem because they wanted to know where Z was born, king of the Jew. Bethlehem was discovered because the scriptures revealed Bethlehem. And they all gather around the big theme. Where is it going to be? And they all agree it's Bethlehem. And the major was enlightened, but it was all by inspiration of Herod. See? The big Bible convention was politicized. Hello? I feel at home. Your silence tell me, preach it. I have a plane to catch, so uh, when I'm gone, you can deal with the rest. <laughs> I, I still have to find the Branham Tabernacle Convention. Anyway, that was free. <laughs> he traveled among them and they organized these things for him. You'll not find them doing it in his church. See? Are we going to walk in the way? Or are we walked in our own ways? Or are we going to be like Elisha? Follow the footprints of Elijah and see I walk. Because you are chosen the harder way. You can be like Tommy or you can be like Horror. But I am your portion because you are chosen the harder way. This is a momentous decision. The first convention of the Bible is Herod inspiration. And the team was right. And the message was correct. It was scripture. And it was anointed by minister who came from Babylon. Yes, gifted minister. And they discovered the truth for the hour. But they all were part of a murder plot. And they did not know that. Am I in the Bible? Yes. And they come out, they say, well, we've discovered the scripture. We know it's happening. You brought the message of the star, following the star. You told us about it. We united our forces, and now we know exactly the geography, where the blessing is coming from. Let's all go and worship and bring our gifts to the king. And Herod say, when you return, tell me also, so I can go. We're going to have meetings there. We'll move it from Jerusalem, the next convention in Bethlehem. They went with that knowledge and inspiration. And they come to find the Messiah. And they offer the gifts. And they begin to return back home. And the angel said, don't go that way. Outside of a visitation, they're going right back there and become the leader in a murder plot for the word. But God's supernatural intervention stopped them and turned them around. He said, don't go back that way. Don't go back in the same way. You came around to do the same thing, exactly the same. And let your deliverance be thorough and carry on. Deliver by the angel of the Lord so you don't stay with the program that you thought was the way. Because there is a way that seemeth right unto man by the end is death. You know, the devil knows the Bible. And in order to cut the program of God, that's what he did in the beginning. Intercepted Eve before the anointing fell on Adam to bring forth the seed. Because the prophecy knew the principal lives. And he wanted to kill that infant child before it took on the fullness. Of the plan and pay the redemption price. He tried to kill it at birth. Because it always tried to kill the move of God at birth. When people don't understand that you don't want any influence from the old ways. You don't want that. A new thing the Lord will do. Stay with the leadership of the light of the age. Let him guide you. You don't need the influence of these great and so-called Powerful ones. And the angel guide you. Let the light guide you. It will guide you to the word made flesh all the time. The word made the flesh in you. That was the first program. that you know with Joseph and Mary. It was the pressure of the hour that is sending them back there. Maybe they don't understand even. They're not following those stars. They're actually following the laws of the land. Because the laws seem to be against them. Are you with me? And they're kind of bending under it and resisting a little bit. I still think, well, we still have to do it. Because the taxation has taken place. Well, pay your taxes. Jesus paid the taxes. 
Don't hide no nothing. He said, that fish has the money. Fish it out. Give it away. So we don't offend them. We have the gospel to represent. And the taxation pressure, the word was coming to be born. Even Joseph didn't understand that reality. But God had to deal with him to let him know, that is of me of the Holy Ghost. Because Mary could not explain to him that the angel come to me and make him believe it. He had to have his own experience. Are you with me? Yes, God come to the woman. God come to the woman because she represents the bride age. I'm in the song, the super church. The word is in the bride. As it was in Mary. She knows what to do with the word. The angel come to her first. Just like he come to El Mary Magdalene. She's the first one to see the Messiah. Not great Peter with the key. The man with the key was denied three times before the cock crow. Are you with me? Because John brought him in the palace and put him before Caiaphas. And, and Peter was under pressure. Under pressure, he said, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Failed to identify with the word. Do I have the key? Are you with me? Yeah. But God was showing him that in that hour of the great visitation of the Easter power coming back in the church, he needed deeper repentance because he thought he was zealous for God that he did not know he still had insecurity inside of him. God wants to expose it to bring him to genuine repentance so that he can get the real Holy Ghost. Yes, he had revelation. He knew the Messiah. He even had a sword to fight for Jesus. But in all of that, uh, he was found second. And Mary Magdalene with seven devils. She had overcome the spirit of seven church ages, organizational anointing, so that the word can come to her. The risen Christ uh, met a woman first. She had to go tell Peter, I saw the Lord. And Peter and John had to come, believe the testimony. Peter probably said, you, Magdalene? Yes, me, Magdalene. Because she's the bride. The bride has what? The mind of Christ. She knows what to do with the word. She can't help it. It's inside of her. Just like Rebecca. She can say the prayer of Eliezer in secret. I am that prayer. I'll tell you what you pray. I'll not only tell you what you pray. I will do what you pray. And you're not going to do it. I'll do it. And even your servant. Because Eliezer didn't come alone. Eliezer come with servant. See, when they try to help, he says, stop. He said, you stop. I'm going to make this hundred trips and pack this water myself. Where did she get that energy? Where did she get that strength? Where did she get that vision? She came with it. Because Genesis 22, the last part of the chapter, tell you that Rebecca was from Bethuel. Bethuel was the eighth son of Nahor. She came from the eighth son. It speaks of eternity. She came from eternity right after Isaac was offered in Genesis 22, the end of the chapter, showed to us the Genesis of Rebecca. Yeah. Chapter 23, Sarah dies. Chapter 24, Eliezer, go get her. But she's already identified in chapter 22. Coming from the eighth son, Betra, the eighth son of Naor. She come from eternity. It's because he? Eternity. She was the word to begin with. She knew who she was. And when Eliezer met her, she activated was inside of her to tell him what he did not tell her. That's the bride. That is the bride. That is you. That is greater than Mary. Greater than uh, Rebecca. Right here. And when you know yourself that way, you're not intimidated by anything. Are you with me? Even though Joseph said, I'll leave you, you know that God will deal with Joseph. He's going to come right back here. You don't have to beg him. You have to say, please, honey, no divorce. You know, you, you, you throw him in the street. No, no, you don't have to do nothing. When you are in the word, the word helps you. The word keeps you. You don't try to negotiate for your own way. You are a prisoner to the word. You stand prisoner to the word because that word has already seen you through. You come from the word, you become flesh, you come back to the word. That is the church today, and that is always the church. That is why the Shunammite woman of a day in Memphis, Tennessee, she landed a plane for Brother Branham. She sent a storm because she could have the baby before she met Elisha. Now, the Shunammite of the Bible, she met Elisha, built a room in the wall, and put a table, a stool, a table, and the lamp, fed him back and forth, and then finally he said, what do you need? Says a baby. Say, well, don't lie to me. 
He said, oh, next year the baby's coming. But the slave woman in Memphis, she never met Elisha. She just met the scripture. And she saw herself in the scripture. Somehow she bypassed the Elisha part. And she got the baby. Hello? She got the baby without Elisha. She pulled it out of the Bible. She said, Lord, I'm a woman like this woman. I don't have a child, but you can give me a child. God didn't say, well, you have to wait until you meet Elisha. She got it before you, Elisha. And when the baby got sick, then she remembered, oh, there's a portion of the scripture I skipped. Then she said, Lord, the baby's dying. I don't want the baby to die. And then she remembered, oh, there's a part of the word I didn't consider. He said, Lord, where's Elisha now? That is the bride. By the time she said, where's Elisha? That fellow like starts going home. And in, in the plane, he's thinking, I'm getting home. But this woman... She threw a storm in the air. Her faith did that. Pan American, whatever the airline say, emergency landing, we can't make it to the storm. You know some storm are beneficial. Don't complain about all the storm in the atmosphere. Because some of it brings great benefit. It causes the word to come right to your doorstep. Isn't that supernatural that God will say, I'm bringing Elisha to you. God didn't tell her, well, you know, go to the whatever hotel, Piccadilly, whatever it was, in downtown, and ask for a man by the name of William Branham. It's my great prophet Elijah, and he'll pray for you, and then uh, the child will be okay. God never said that. No, no, no. Not, not only God landed the plane, yes. force landing, torn in the air. Yes. But Memphis, we have to spend the night. Yes. And the airline has to invest all the money, um, do I have to stand you there? I don't know. <laughs> now, the airline have to spend all the money to lodge all these travelers. Yeah. And that's one of the, f- the one time Brother Ram said he stayed in a very fancy hotel. Like I say to my people, can you imagine a woman living in the poor side of town yeah. put the prophet in a five star hotel yeah. at the airline cost? Yeah. Don't you want to serve a God like that? I have nothing to put in the offering basket, but your faith can put the prophet in the best accommodation. In the hour of crisis. That God's supernatural economy. Are you with me? God, God, God makes Pharaoh pay Jochebed to feed her own baby. And then you never have an issue, I have a problem here, a problem. You have no problem when you have God. Because God is a God of paradox. You know how to fix it exactly the way he wants. He knows how to do that. By the time he sleeps in the precious bed, he still woke up early, you know, because he know, okay, the airline is scheduled. I have some postcard to mail, and I'm going to take care of my postcard. And as it's coming out, the voice begins to say, keep walking. Keep walking. What was the pull? The woman was the pull. She has him on the hook and she's reeling him in. Because she did pray, she did break through. And God come to her. Say, yes, you bypassed Elisha, but he's somewhere in the land. I gave you the blessing because he's around. But you did not know that. But now you can bring him to your doorstep. I'm not sending you to his doorstep. I'm bringing him to your doorstep. Behold, I send to you Elijah the prophet. Elijah came to the door of the woman. Are you with me? She didn't go look for him. Go brought him right there. And she's sitting there by the fence. She's waiting for him. He has no clue why he's walking. She knows exactly why he's walking. She has the mind. She has the plan. She has the vision. She has the outcome. She knows that when he comes, this deliverance is sure. He is clueless. Hello. I know some of you like to worship William Branham, but I'm telling you, the bride is the mind of Christ. She knew what was happening. Are you with me? By the time she sees him, she says, hello, person. Yes. Me, person, how do you know me? He said, well, I knew you were coming. He didn't know he was coming. She knew he was coming. He said, where's your suitcase? She even knew he had a suitcase. Are you with me? Because God come to her. And by the time she comes, she tells the story. And Brother Ram is listening. He said, my goodness. Now I know why he's saying, I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. But then she found another one who was one of them. 
Not just him, one of them, but the children and one of them. Hey, one of them, one of them meet. Two omnipotence was coming together. When two omnipotence come together, something shakes. Death is stop. I don't care how death is coming. I don't care if it's syphilis. I don't care if it's a narrow disease. I don't care if it's death. Rattling in the throat. When the omnipotence meet and the bride knows that she's a word that God will stop it. He always does that. But look at my great prophet. That's why I love him. And please don't try to replace him with some great preacher. He's in a class by himself. Yes. Even in the land of the theophany. They say, we have to put you here. But he's so humble, even in his theophany. He said, no, don't put me here. He said, it's not your choice. God made you a leader in the earth. You have to have a special place here. But you see, his attitude, even in that dimension, was the same humble person. See? So don't give us the next big shot. We don't want them. We want the little shot. Hello? David still killed Goliath. David still killed Goliath. And he was not in the army of Saul. Hello? Don't sit there and say, I'm a nobody. Who told you that? Who told you that? This Bible? Or this message? We heard the song. You sang with enthusiasm. Did you hear the song being anointed? Watch my prophet. He listened to the story. Me, myself, in this picture, you yet have to find a pastor who will do that. Because when I was preaching it, feel him all over my toes. He's stepping on them. All five, or all ten, sorry. <laughs> he says, sister, he tells the story. He says, Parson, can you pray? I don't even want him healed. I just don't want him in that darkness. Look, look at the prophet. The prophet say, Auntie, you pray first. Can you imagine? They call the pastor to pray. And the pastor say, the woman, you pray first. And the, the prophet listened to the woman pray. He said, I can tell she talked to God. By the time he's finished, she's finished. The prophet say, Amen. Some of us are too big for God to do anything with us yet. He say amen to the sister prayer. And he say, Lord, I don't know why I'm here. Even up to that time, no vision, no nothing. He's going by what she's saying. And he's going by her prayer. He say, as the woman pray, Lord, let it be so according to her faith. He acknowledged her action. He acknowledged her prayer. And added him as an amen. And before he say, Oh, I can see light, Mama. Mama, it's getting light in here. Because the woman knew who she was. She knew her place in the world. She can bring Elijah to her. Aren't I a preacher? Somebody tell me that somebody say, God send Elijah to a man and God send that man to us. It's not the truth. It is not the truth. I'm saying it on the authority of the scripture. It's not the truth. You have to cancel a lot of the Bible to make something like that stand. That is anathema. Are you listening to me? The truth remains the truth. And we can't adjust it to make ourselves go look good. I've not been called to pray for a sister yet in a family and ask the sister to pray. When I'm saying it here, I'm feeling convicted. But the truth is, the prophet will display his humility because he understood that God did not deal with me on this. God dealt with her. She knows where she's standing. She always has the baby. She has the baby that shows her faith in the scripture. And that brother Ram said, do you know me? My name is Brian. I'm a prayer for the sick. He said, I don't know you. But I know the Bible. You never heard my name say, no, 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 I never heard you. But I know my experience, and it's by my experience that you're coming here to my gate and you're coming in my house. 
and then he grabbed the plane. You see, that was put in the Bible to give us the church, the bride of the last day. Confidence in what God has made us. And nobody can change that. The authority of the scripture gave us the privilege to know that we are the super race as Mary. We have the word on our inside. And that word is going to bring forth Christ no matter what. The pressure, the dislike, the opposition, the rejection, the spitting, the mocking, the ridicule. She knew she was carrying the life of Isaiah 7.14. She knew unto her a son was given. Isaiah 9.6 was inside of her. She knew that. And as the bride knew that, this bride knows the same. It can be watered down. It's stronger with the elect. Are you with me? Be, be, because of that, she's going and she's carrying the mystery of the promise. Joseph don't understand. God fixes him. They come in the city. There is no place for that word to be birthed. But yet God knew that it had to be on the side of all the great happenings. And the shepherd on the outside and they come into the manger. The child was born. But God allowed them to get their own visitation to let them know that it was happening among them. Yes. So they can welcome it in a way that the angelic choir, the prophet said, think about it. The first time angel ever sang to man, it was when the word was coming flesh and the shepherd heard the heavenly atmosphere yes. because they know it's going to take atmosphere to bring birth for the real seeds of God. That's why God acquainted them with heavenly music. Because shepherds have to know the atmosphere and that's where the children are born or the lambs are born in an atmosphere that is angelic. It takes the atmosphere for the birth. Amen. That's the reason God exposed them to the angelic music and told them, you shall find the babe wrapped in southern cloth. They had to go begin to search. They checked this table, pink blanket, not the place. Are you with me? Because the devil always knows how to impersonate. To throw on things that will look like the thing. But he told them, wrapped in swelling cloth. They come here, fancy velvet, blue blanket. They say, no, that's not it. They bypass many stable. And they come the next one, and he said, not the one. By the time they come, they saw one wrapped in swelling cloth. They said, this is the one. They worship and they begin to go with a testimony. We met the word, met flesh in our day. Are you with me? But on the hillside of the city, not in the main places. That's why you never underestimate the power of insignificant things. You never sit there at a complex of inferiority. They say, well, we meet in the garage. Praise God! It's better than a stable. You don't park a donkey here. The word comes. And in those places, you have to be able to recognize that the same God will do the same thing. The word will be made flesh. Where the scripture is identified and somebody is carrying an experience of the word they informed in them when you come in that kind of a place. The atmosphere is angelic. And God has to do something for his children because we are looking for the real Holy Ghost. The general baptism of fire. That is what's going to take away all our humanity and get us ready for the faith civilization. That's why we are gathered here. We're not here for a man program. We're not here to build a ministry. We're here to see men and women reconnect with God, established in a general true relationship. The prophet said, that is the purpose of my ministry. Not to build an organization, not to print people to me, but to make sure there's established between God and man a real genuine union. Where they know that God is dwelling in them. That is the purpose of us coming together. Not to rally around the next great big fellow. And you that I come from that kind of a system, I dare you to try to rebuild it here. Remember the come out of Egypt, I have to leave Egypt. And then God had to burn Egypt out of them, but because he couldn't, many did not enter in the promise. Because they always look back, they always look back. They want the garlic, they want the leeks. That's why they want to kill Moses and go back. So not a pill of fire will send to move you forward. You have nothing to look back to. Are you with me? If you want to move with God, yes, you can burn your bridges. 
in the way of uh, trying to emulate, compete, compare, and all these different things. You want to go the exact opposite. Hello? Are we in the Exodus? This is the real Exodus. Exodus back into immortality. Exodus back into the power of the chain to bring us into glorification. That is the real Exodus. And in reality, the Exodus is never coming out. Are you with me? That is only half of it. The other part is fighting to, to enter into. Because many came out to 110. And that is the challenge. Why? Because the prophet said they came out of Egypt, but Egypt did not come out of them. Now, I, I, I'm not throwing no stone. I'm taking scripture principle. To walk with me, you must walk alone. Go to the prophet that. But you see, the reason the last chapter of the book of John put Peter the great apostle, because it's always the ideas of people. What about that one? What about John? What is that to you? You follow me. Well, at least I have to stay with John. You know, he's young and he's vigorous and he can get me places. So forget it. You stay with me. What I have for him is his. What I have for you is yours. Don't be looking around saying, oh, the grass is green on the other side. Because they had a meeting, we have to have a meeting. Because they had a special figure, we have to have a special figure. Call no comparison. Because they do this, we have to do the same. Is that your example? No, your example is the word. And the, because, forgive me, I'm French, okay? And the prophecy of tremendous victory in the love of Iran came in French. So it's one of my favorite. Because the prophet come to Oklahoma City, Tommy Osborne University and big thing, and all rubber big thing. By the time you look at it, and he had a complex thing. Lord, if they come and see my little typewriter in a little small trailer, I'll be so embarrassed. He started to think, Lord, maybe you don't trust me. Look what you did with them, and look what I have. And the ministry come out of mine. He get into that human element. And he started to feel bad. He wants to kind of excuse himself. And God say, I am your portion. Look up here. Don't compare with them. Look at the other side. Doesn't matter what they're doing, you keep your eyes on me. I am your portion. And his things was given for our example. Is that true? You make me feel so at liberty, or I forget what time I started. And I forgot that I have a plane to catch, too. Okay, let me. Let's put a timer for myself, excuse me. I, I have to do that uh, just to make sure. I, I don't, praise the Lord. Let's go down. You see, we are in the real exodus. And when they come in, in that first one, you notice God gave them the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud, which is the same person, depending on uh, whether it was day or night. By night, it was a pillar of light to enlighten them. But there was a pillar of cloud, actually, because you're in the desert. And when the sun is burning, the cloud actually was to block the sun and give them some shade. So they can move in the cool of his presence. And the Bible says he never left them in spite of the condition and unbelief and so on. Because he was, he was, he was there, actually, his first appearance and manifestation there in Exodus 13 was to give them the kind of deliverance that was going to be the greatest. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Because when God took them out, Pharaoh changed his mind. But it was actually God trapping Pharaoh. Because God wanted to show his glory, he wanted to show his power. Yes. And he had destroyed Egypt, vanquished the economy, dismantled it because well, the Nile turned into uh, blood where all the fish die. The cattle dies and the plagues and all these different things. So all these things begin to take place in Egypt. And before God takes them out, he struck every home of the Egyptian with death. So there's funeral in all the Egyptian home. 
but in the home of the Israelite, no funeral. Expectation for departure. And they're ready, dressed and ready to go. Now, that is the first exodus in the shadow. We're in the final great one because we're moving back into immortality because that's the real exodus. Now, that's why back then you have the element of death included on the Egyptian side, beginning with the firstborn, because the firstborn carried the father's name and carried really the lineage. God was showing that he was going to end human life because this is the plan. Death will strike the whole land. Are we together? Yeah. Uh, what happened under the fourth seal? The fourth seal, his name is called death. He's riding to kill with famine, with sword, with death, which is pestilence, and with the beast or the kings of the earth. We know that. It's war, it's economy, and it's sickness and disease. And all these things that they're breeding in laboratory, the prophet told us. They're going to spread as germ warfare and all these different things. Of course, they have the sword. We know what Russia is doing and what's happening with Hamas in Israel. We, we know these things. You're up to date on these. But we know these things are leading toward Armageddon. Because the prophet was told in 1933 of the great vision that he saw. The one word the spirit told him is a watch Russia. Keep your eyes on the king of the north. And then, of course, that brings us to Daniel chapter 10 and 11. 12, which is one vision to conclude the book of Revelation. At the end, we know in that time, he said, those that know their God will do exploit, and we know that Michael will stand for the children in the time of trouble. Yes, that is for the Jews with Moses and Elijah, but the same Michael is to stand for the gentle first to give us full deliverance here before he turned back to the Jews. We know that. And all these things are happening. We have the second Catholic president in the White House since John F. Kennedy. We have uh, the pandemic that they tried the world to show how much power they can wield to control and shut down people. We understand these things. We see what Putin is doing. Strengthen to take Crimea backward in 2014 when he came down to take that land and then go now to Ukraine to reclaim the land that he believed belong to Russia because he's coming down to show his strength and to show his muscle. We understand that. It's all in Daniel chapter 11. These are last day events unfolding to tell us that when God spoke to the prophet 1933, so we can keep our eyes and watch what these people are doing. And it's unfolding exactly by prophecy. This is the pre Armageddon activity, and you watch them now all talking about Armageddon, nuclear, World War III, even the men on the streets are talking about it. Because the Bible said the third war is coming quickly. Yes. So it's moving in that direction. Yes. Even what's happening with Israel and Hamas, it's in line. That is why when they made the attack, you, might, you may know this, they chose to do it on Putin's birthday, which was October 7, when Hamas did the great attack. Mr. Putin is born on that day. Are you with me? Yes. Hello? Yes. And when you look back in 2014, because the first war, war of the Bible is Genesis 14, when the nation came from Omar and the rest of them, and Sodom was captured, and Lot was captured. That was in, 20, in Genesis 14. And it's in 2014 that Mr. Putin went to Crimea. The same way. Are you with me? And if you look back, you're 62 years old in that hour, because it's a book of Daniel, you'll find that when uh, Darius came to take the kingdom. It's the only place in the book of Daniel where they give you the age of the king. They say Darius was 62 years old when he took the kingdom and Belshazzar under many, many technical forces, the kingdom fell. So how can it be he's 62 years, he's 2014, he's going down to Crimea, and then when Hamas will go attack Israel, they choose to do it on Putin's birthday. Because these things are connected to show to us that we are moving with certainty toward Armageddon. And then we have the second Catholic president in the White House. We have the 60th anniversary of the shaking of Alaska just this March 27. And we have planetary alignment just this Monday. Following the prophet birthday around Easter time. So it's to awaken us to the fact that it's happening rapidly. Things happening around us to show to us that the direction of the prophecy is unfailing. This exodus is certain. But before the first bomb fall, this bread has to be ready to live here. That is why we can't be in a church program. We can't be in personality cult. We can't be in religious business. We have to be in preparation for the exodus, the final one. And the pillar of fire come to do that. Because the Pelos rider is to kill the rest of them. 
Armageddon cleans up the earth. He said that in future home. Are we together? So here we are on this April 10th, uh, the anniversary of the Easter seal message, where he preached Easter seal and the rising of the sun, the last year of his ministry. Two Easter messages, one in Phoenix, one in the tabernacle. And today, April 10th, it's gathering us here today, speaking of this exodus, not for us to have a vision for a church program. No, no, for us to have a vision of our final exodus. Because you don't want to stay here with the things that are already breaking. Are you with me? But as a people that are dead and anointed to break the yoke of the enemy and to be free from the bondage of sin, corruption, and mortality. Because that's the real exodus. To go back to our eternal self. That's the plan. So that is why in the first exodus, death is included with the firstborn. And they all die in that midnight hour. But God is harnessing his people out. Because the token that was applied was to show that death will to bypass the house of the elect. That was the reason of the token. The blood applied was showing that death can touch this house. But as a sign of the true token that is to be applied. Because the prophet said in desperation message. The token message was the right one to follow the opening of the seventh seal. Because the token today is the literal life. It's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God. It's not the third person of the Trinity. It's the same one that was in the Father. That was in the Son. Come in the church. When you have it, you have the life of God. Are you with me? You, you're as indestructible as God is. You're as invincible as God is. Because you say, it is the literal life. And in this day and age, when you possess it, it gives you the power to know that I am in the bride and I'm destined to a change. I can hold on to my promise. And when the revelation strikes your heart, you can be like Simeon. Because Simeon said, death can't even touch me because that's a word of promise that was given to me. Are you with me? The prophet preached about him in expectation all the time because an old man, but yet he knew that that word of promise, I'll see the word, I'll handle it myself. It didn't matter if the doctor said, cancer, stage 11 or 12 or 13, whatever stage they have. He looked at him and said, are you joking? That sounds like a real good joke. And he laughed at it because he you know God gave him a revelation. But the rapture is a revelation to the bride alone. When it strikes your heart, you're like Enoch, you're walking with God. You know that it does not matter. A bomb can drop here. There can be a twin tower bombing or a plane flying to me. I'm as invincible as God is because the word that finding a bedding ground of faith, when you get a hold of it, it puts you in another atmosphere, another dimension. And that's what the church was ordained to be. See, we produce too much uh, message, historian, theologian, and full of knowledge. That we want a faith that anchors in the word. And when that revelation strikes you, you stand there, you can face the gates of hell. And you know, the gates of hell won't prevail. And that rapture revelation is coming for the elector. And if you're part of the elect, and God begins to speak to you, I chose you, I call you. It comes as a still small voice. Don't say, you know, Lord, I did that. I'm not good enough. Who told you supposed to be good enough? Just believe it when he speaks to you. Begin to get a hold of it. Say, it's mine. It's mine. I deny every other voice. I deny every other thought. The word is mine. And hold on to it. Say, I'm ordained to break the yoke of mortality and step into immortality. Because I see all the signs around us. Glory to God. If you see all the signs, then hold on to the word. We're not sitting by accident. We're all sitting here by predestination. God knew exactly what will be here. God knew exactly what will be said. I didn't plan to say this, but if God says it, then believe it. Don't let the devil tell you, you're nobody. No, you're somebody. That's how God can take an insignificant preacher from Africa, transfer him in America, give him a little ministry, and send him here to encourage your faith. Because you're special. And bring a special singer from another church and send him here to let you know you are a special people. Let nobody change that. You are the people. Yes, sir. You are the people. And no devil will stand before you. You must believe it. Yes, you must believe it. 
Why not? What is the next alternative? They turn the end of the devil. Not a chance. I believe the word. Like Mary, let it be unto me according to your promise. And let me move into this reality that I put you here. I don't care how backslidden you are. I don't care if you dying with syphilis. I don't care if the devil has wrapped you in so much darkness until you can't see nothing. I'm dying. It's so dark. It's so dark. The bride is here. The woman with the promise is here. And the word, the word in your heart, the word in the prophet, when the two come together, the miraculous comes to pass. Death has to stop. Glory to God. Death has to stop. Death has to stop. You have to know that. Death can stop here. As I said, the token in the house of the Israel who believed in Moses, he said, death will not enter. And they believed it. They took animal blood and they put it there. We have more than animal blood. The blood of God. The blood of God. And then when he brought it back in a ten age, the message of the hour. The message of the hour. He said, that's the blood. That's the talk. Then what are you going to do? Stand there and question it. No, believe it. Believe it. Let's stand to our feet. Let's say, I believe it. It's mine. It's mine. It belongs to me. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. You claim it as your own. Don't worry about somebody else. You claim your own promise, your own blessing. He says, it's mine. So it's mine. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we know your promises are sure. Your promises are certain. Your reality is here, oh God. Let no one bypass it. Oh, cause it to drop in somebody's heart so they can come out of their religious condition and come into the reality of the generalness of the word may spread and life in their own lives, oh God. Grant it today because that is your promise and that is your desire for us. And we judge you faithful like Sarah of old, not repenting upon our ability, but certainly looking only to your promises. They are yen and an. And we believe them today. Oh, grant it, I pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can have your seat. I'm not done. You can have your seat. You see, when they come in that exodus, God was showing the power of believing Moses. And applying the word correctly. Not on the back door, on the front door, on the lintel, on the doorpost. That simple obedience of action upon what the Exodus prophet has said brought such a victory. Are you with me? So they came out with great singing and joy. They spoiled Egypt. Are you with me? They borrowed from the neighbors and all these things. Are you with me? And they went out. Because God knew that they had to journey in the wilderness for so long. They'll need all these virtual, okay? Yeah. So don't, don't go get a loan in the bank say, well, I'm just going to the rapture. I'm not going to pay it. You, the rapture is not 40 years of wilderness journey, okay? Amen. Because I heard people say, well, the rapture is coming. I just go get a loan and I don't have to pay, but have to pay it. Jesus. God will make sure the rapture is delayed until you pay it. Yeah. Because the prophet said, pay all that. Yeah. And, and when the widow, her children was going to go in bondage, and Elisha ministry, yeah. he said, well, my children go in bondage. Yeah. I have nothing to pay. Yeah. God, God brought the supernatural economy in the house. Yeah. So don't go and say, well, I'll take a big loan and, and uh, interest delay till uh, uh, 24 months. And then by the time 24 months go, after the preacher preach, I know we're going home, so I don't have to worry about it. You're going to delay the rapture for us, so don't do that. Okay? Because the prophet said, pay your debt. You know? So don't, don't, don't try that. So God had them spoil the Egyptian because it's a long earthly journey that they have to go through. So that makes sense back then. The rapture is a quick change. See? So you can't apply the same principle. You can't compare potato with apples. It does not work. You can't mislocate, misinterpret, and misapply the word. 
Is that correct? Yes. You have to apply correctly and you have to see the context that a word is to be applied in. So, well, they borrow the two things and they send them out. They're going singing and dancing, you know? They're coming out, but God, God is doing it that way to trap the great enemy. Are you with me? Because Pharaoh and his army now represent the last enemy. I want to call him Bad Mamba. Because I, I'm going into paradox now. God killed the firstborn, but God's target is the head honcho, the top, the top dog. That's what God is interested in. God is interested in the last enemy to be destroyed, not the, the little ones. Are you with me? So God is trapping Pharaoh to try to make a claim. Because by the time they went, he got shaken from his side. He said, what did we do? We let these people go. He took all his great man, all his great chariot, all his great army. He said, now let's go for, to finish them off and bring them back here and destroy some of them. Now it's not the taskmaster only. Now it's uh, Pharaoh's his elite troop, his chariot, and all his army. They're coming now to stop them. God said exactly the way I wanted it. Now I want to show you why this pillar of cloud and pillar of fire was introduced to them. It was a pillar of fire of supernatural defense. It was a final supernatural defense against the greatest enemy. And I'm taking Pharaoh as the Mamba. I'm taking Pharaoh as the last enemy to be conquered. This is the beginning of the Exodus. But everything in the beginning yes. or in Genesis yes. is to show us things in the end. Yes. Because God will give us victory. But God is looking for the final victory. Yes. When death itself will be conquered. Yes. When the great enemy will be vanquished. Yes. When the people will possess the Exodus in totality. Yes. And they'll go from mortal to immortality. Yes. That is the final plan. Yes. And this is the plan for our age. You understand that? Yes. That is why when the prophet was leaving the scene, he closed his ministry humor, rapture, cross the border, things that are to be, which is John 14, the father's house, many mentioned, and then goes, event made clear by prophecy, resurrection. You heard it in the song. And then goes and he preached leadership in Covina, his last sermon, which is Moses on Mount Transfiguration. Is that correct? He said, Tori Shongula, the one that ended up in hell. Yeah. That's leadership. And then Moses will end up in another rich Shongula, a Mount Transfiguration, where Jesus was glorified, yeah. and Elijah and Moses represent the resurrected saint and yeah. the rapture saint. Yeah. This is leadership. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. On the mount. Yeah. Yeah. So when you watch the last sermon that he's bringing before God take him on, and then communion as a type of the wedding supper that we go into, after the rapture, the resurrection, and the Theophanies connect with us we are here. Because they're raised into glorification. We meet with them. Yes. Amen. And then we head to the communion. So he closed his message with this conclusion of the vision of the final exodus that we are to be focused upon. Yes. Not from one geography to the next, but from this earthly to the heavenly. Yes. That is the promise. Are we together? Yes. So we're looking at the first one as a type of it, and we're seeing that when Pharaoh now decides to make his charge and his assault, yes. because he's coming with uh, vengeance in his heart, yes. because his firstborn is dead. Yes. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. They say my top dog is dead. Yes. Now the top dog is coming on the scene. Yes. And he's coming with all his elite troops. He said, I'm going to take care of them. You killed my son. I'm coming after all of you. God say that's exactly what I wanted. Yes. That's exactly what I wanted. So I can show to you what is my real plan. My real plan is to be done with your greatest enemy. Yes. The one who held you there under the law and held you in submission, held you in bondage, held you in all kind of labor that you didn't want to be a part of and kept you there. He said, you're going to get total deliverance. Yes. Total deliverance. Yes. Nobody to make no claim anymore. So when he begins to make his job and he saw them, of course, Israel is panicking. They're crying and they're booing. They're complaining. Say, Moses, what did you come to do? Everybody see the end of them. They say, oh, they're coming to kill us. They thought they're coming to die. But God had a different plan. God's plan was, you'll see your enemy that you see, you'll see them no more. This great mighty captain, you're not going to see them no more. Everything that troubled you. Everything that you think I can't overcome, I can't rise above this. God said, now this is my business. 
You don't have to fight it. You don't have to try. You just have to follow the word as it's directing you onward. That was the plan. So, what God did, God was going to show to them that his presence was there for great and total deliverance. The Bible said that light that was moving ahead of them moved to the back of them. To be identified with the weakly, to be identified with the slow, to be identified with the paralyzed, to be identified with those who couldn't go very fast, to be identified with the weak and the needy, to be identified with those who won't last. Somehow they become first because the pillar of fire got close to them. They might have thought, well, I'm so far behind, nobody knows me. I wonder if Moses knows me even I exist. But in the hour of the Exodus, the pillar of fire said, I'm going for the nobodies. I'm going for the slow one. I'm going for the unidentified one. I'm going for those that they don't look like they're immune to anything. I'm going for those who look like they're holding the program back because they can't run as fast. God said, I'm going for them now. I'm going back for the honest and heart. I'm moving my position. I'm no longer with the leader up front. I'm with the little one back here. Are you with me? I'm no longer the leader up front. I'm with the little one up here. To take care of the great enemy, I have to be with the little one. They can run as fast, they can step as big. So God is moving himself to be with them, to be the guard and the protection. And God held himself there patiently until everyone, the slow one was moving. God just stood there and is blocking for them. Over there they can't move. They can do nothing because God is holding them back because he's not going to get you. That is my message to you. The cloud of final deliverance is here. Amen. And those that look like the insignificant, the journey come lately. He goes to be identified with them and he begins to protect them back here. And he stood for them with everything. And Moses is way ahead. He's already gone. But with a little one back here 50 some years later, we look like we have nothing going for us. But you have to know that a great light has done reposition itself because he's getting ready to deal with the last enemy. He's getting ready to deal with the power of death to break it so a church can rise into a rapture of faith. He opened the way, he moved them, but he positioned himself to guard his behind. Are you with me? Once they pass a cross on the other side, God said, now watch me. Now watch me. Are you with me? And Pharaoh thought, oh, there's an opportunity. I see a preacher. I can get a hold of them. Remember when it, you feel like, hey, the breach has been open. Like the devil's going to get to me because of the hour that we're living in. If you're one of his, following this pillar of fire, following this message of the change, this message of the final exodus, you don't have to worry about nothing. You just have to stay with the leadership of the messenger of the age, the word of truth. And the pillar of fire will be responsible for your safety. Um, they thought there was a preacher and Pharaoh said, I'll get them too. They begin to try to follow in the same way. The Bible said, God began to trouble the wheels. Begin to take the chariot apart. And before you know it, they're going in every direction. And God said to Moses, watch this. It's over. Not only a brother of Egypt, but the last enemy will try to claim you again. I want to show to you. It's not your power. It's the word that is spoken. And that word says, no more crying. Speak the word. Go forward. And God will take care of the balance. And God took care of it in a glorious way. When the water came, my goodness, this thing began to drown. The Bible says, they sank like land. Remember, these are people that train by... The Nile, yes. they know what your business. Yes. I can they sink like lead. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Somehow God put such burden on them, turned them so heavy yes. until they just went straight to the bottom. They couldn't even swim. Yes. God's judgment are mysterious. Yes. He can open the earth and swallow our people with no funeral and close up. It can make them heavy as lead and they go there and all the sinking, the swimming skill just disappear because you're strapping them in a place that they could not recover from. But it was God showing when the cloud appear, it's for that kind of deliverance. And we that have received this message of the return 
of this great cloud which we have an evidence of. That's why the critics have risen up to say all kind of nonsense about it. But it's just because the devil know the power of that which come to bring the word of promise and vindicate it, confirm it, and let us know this message as everything that we need to go back into immortality. The same way Adam was there in fellowship with God and saw himself becoming immortal and losing that robe of innocency and that garment of light. The word that has come to us, when we nourish ourselves with it, it has the power to begin to change the atomic structure on the inside. When you stay in this kind of an atmosphere, and you believe that this is nothing but the truth. It will accelerate the process. That's what it always does. And it's not going to stop until the elect are all on the other side. And when Miriam saw that, well, it was another kind of a song service she had. The Bible says she took a tambourine and began to go around. And Moses will write his first song. And that Exodus prophet was showing to us that this last exodus cannot be doubted, questioned, or surmised about, or wondered about. It is so certain. It is so certain. That's why the prophet tells us that when they took that picture of that pillar of fire, back there, January 24, 1950, in Houston, Texas, the prophet said, we have a more stricter fundamental evidence of the pillar of fire in our age than what they had in the Old Testament. I'll, I'll read that for you. In this message, um, Everlasting Life, December 31st, 1954. He said, I believe that was actually a pillar of fire that led the children of Israel. Don't you believe that? Just a pillar of fire. See, I actually believe that light come into the prison where Peter was at. Don't you believe that testimony? I believe it with all my heart. Just more than I believe, more than I believe my name is William Branham. He believed that more than he believed his name is William Branham. He said, I believe that story, but yet we have a more stricter fundamental proof of it than that. We do have a more stricter fundamental proof. Now, I believe that by faith. And what if the angel of the Lord is standing here now circling and every one of your eyes should be visualized to it? That would be pretty good. But to look at a picture of it is far more proof than what if you were looking at it with your eyes. See, isn't that right? Because you could have an optical illusion. But the camera won't take an optical illusion. It won't do it because it's a camera. And it'll take the actual picture. It has to be there to strike the lines. You can have optical illusion and things that look like it is when it's not. See, that when that picture is taken, it, it could be psychology when you look at it. You see? But not when a camera takes it. You see, when you look at it with optical illusion, it could also be psychology. And you just, you see, you see that there, and you just keep saying, yes, I believe it. I believe it so much, still, actually, you think you see it when you don't. He, he's saying in psychology also, people can say to themselves, I see something, I see something, until they actually see it. But he say only psychology as an optical illusion. And you just got you so mentally pressed toward it till you just imagine it. So imagine it so much till it becomes a reality. You just, he gave an example, you just imagine that somebody hates you once and they don't hate you, but you imagine they do and you just keep thinking they don't like me and the first thing you'll be shunning that person when they haven't done nothing to you. And after a while it becomes so reality to you till you actually believe that. But what he's saying that when Jack Ayer and, and Theodore Kipperman studio took that picture that you have in the back there, he say that is a more stricter fundamental proof. Because science designed a camera as a device that cannot take psychology or go into a mental uh, optical illusion. It was designed and made by man to catch that light. And God actually had to bring himself, slow himself to a dimension to make himself available to that mechanical camera. Are you with me? Because you can take all the camera you want. Everybody has one on the phone and flash them, flash them. Uh, you're not going to see the pillar of fire we, we know is here. 
unless God chooses to slow himself down to a speed that is material enough because the camera is only designed to pick up things that the light will strike here that is tangible and reflected on the negative. Are you with me? So God had to slow himself down so the camera can pick him up. He allowed that, but then he allowed the scientific devices to pick up his presence. That man made. I think Jack Ayers was a Catholic and uh, Theodore Kipperman, I think he was, he was a, a Jew. So a Jew and a Catholic, they own a studio, and Dr. Best hired them to ridicule F.F. Bosworth, not Brother Branham. And the pillar of fire came because F.F. Bosworth was defending the seven compound redemptive name of Jehovah Rapha, yeah. included in those names. Yeah. And Dr. Best was taking all these higher photographer to show how he could ridicule Brother uh, F.F. Bosworth, yeah. who was a man who was a precious friend of the prophet and is going to defend divine healing yeah. and God allowed his picture to be taken yeah. for defending divine healing. Yeah. Okay. Simply to show to us that, hey, if God can define divine healing with his presence, divine healing is an earnest of the resurrection. That's right. That's right. The reason God gave us 30 years of divine healing ministry from Durban, South Africa, Seven Track Road, and Bombay, and India, and all of these things, is because resurrection was really the plan. But the earnest was being waved over and over and over and over. So that we know that this is really the plan. God desires to conquer death. Because death entered the garden by the serpent, but God's plan was to conquer death. And he conquered it on Easter Sunday, but it was not for him to conquer it, it was for you, the descendant of Adam, to conquer it. That is the contest. And the remaining group here that have received the message have been given the privilege to be the elite troop that is going to finish this battle and to bring that conquest into materialization. That's why you're sitting here. Never forget that. Are we together? So if the pillar of fire evidenced himself in that way to show to us that we are going into this promise, and it was a scientific achievement by which God was going to allow us to know that his presence is here, to defend the church, to vanquish death, to bring back immortality, and he needed us to have that photo, which is an element of science, that produced that. Yeah. Then when we go back into the Exodus, yeah. we must find also an element of science that foreshadow the great Exodus. Yes. Just stay with me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'll stop strictly at 9 o'clock, yeah. whether I'm done or not, okay? Yeah. So in Exodus 13, now you watch this. When Moses knows it's time to go out, before the pillar of fire is identified, the Bible tells you that Moses took the bones of Joseph. Is that true? The bones of Joseph was left for them as a testimony that one day they're going to go out. Now, go with me quickly in Genesis 50. Are we together? We preach now. We can do a little Bible study and we'll send you home. The Bible says in Genesis 50, which is the last chapter of the book of Genesis, before the Exodus begins, because the next book is the book of Exodus. But what we read about the bones of Joseph there is identified here in the end of the Exodus. So it tells you that, beginning in verse 22, I'll read there because uh, uh, Paul speaks about Joseph giving commandment in Hebrew 11, 22. Okay? And then here in verse 22, it tells you Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived there 110 years, which shows 11 and 0 as well. Because when you read Hebrew 11, 22, Paul will tell you that when he was dying, Joseph gave commandment concerning his bone to the children of Israel. Because that was an evidence that he had left to them that one day they're going to go out of the land. Are we together? Uh, you're back in the end of the book of Genesis. We see why this is taking place. So it tells you the lifespan of Joseph to 110. And the Bible says Joseph saw Ephraim children to the third generation. And the children also, Machir, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. Because we know Joseph had Ephraim and Manasseh. 
but he's telling you that the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh. So Machir will be the great, the grandson of Joseph. But the children of Machir, which will be the great grandson of Joseph, were brought up on Joseph's knees. Because Joseph saw his children, the generation of Ephraim and Manasseh, the generation of Machir, and the generation of the sons of Machir. So Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh, Machir, the third one, or the grandson, and then the great-grandchildren. So he saw three generations of his children and grandchildren going down. So he said unto the children, he said, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I die and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which is through to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died being 110 years old and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. So they embalmed him now. They embalmed him back then and I want to just drop the quote for you so that when I make my point, you can stay with me a little bit. Here in a message called um, The Voice of the Sign, the prophet makes the statement and the brother will develop it maybe if I don't get to it. Voice of the Sign 1964, February 14. Because now the Egyptians were smart scientific people, more smarter in science than we are today. Proves that they could embalm a body that will still look natural today. That is the science of Egypt. Are you with me? And we, we can't do that. They can build the pyramid. We couldn't do that, see? The things that they had were far beyond our science today. So embalming in ancient Egypt and the building of the pyramid were well, the two things that the prophet gives to us are the sign of advanced science in Egypt. Are we together? Now, when Joseph is dying, the Bible says he was embalmed. But before he was embalmed, I'll just take you a little before that, with the death of his, his father, uh, Jacob, because the last chapter of the book of Genesis has two funerals. The funeral of jo Jacob, which is the father of Joseph, who became like a state funeral in Egypt because they mourned for him about 70 days. And Joseph got leave to take him back to Palestine according to what he had made him swear. Because he had made him swear, you have to take me to Machpelah, to the field where Sarah was buried because jo the field was purchased by Abraham. And the prophet tells you, Abraham purchased the field there because Job was buried around there and Abraham had the same vision that Job had are you with me? Yes. And Jacob had the same vision that Job had and Abraham had. Yes. And when Jacob was going to die, Jacob made his son Joseph promise him that you have to bury him in the same field of Machpelah. Uh, is that true? Amen. But notice, when Jacob is dying, the Bible says in verse 3, Joseph fell upon his father's face. I mean, Genesis 50, the first chapter, I mean the first verse. Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. Because the end of chapter 49, he made an end of commanding his son. He gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. This is the end of the life of Jacob. Okay? And now Joseph commanded his servant, verse 2. Are you with me? Yes. Just say amen so I know you're with me. Joseph commanded his servant, the physician, to embalm his father. And the physician embalmed Israel. And 40 days were fulfilled for him, for so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptian mourned for him three score and ten days. Yes. So they embalmed him. The order was for 40 days. The embalming take place. Yes. And then they mourned for him three score and ten days which is 70 days. The 70 plus the 40, there's 110 days really connected with the funeral of Jacob. And then Joseph asked permission. They took him back to Canaan and the funeral for him there again. And then they bury him. But I want you to notice that the embalming that took place was by Joseph commanding the physician of Egypt because Joseph is the head at that time outside of Pharaoh. It was an embalming that was done, not for everybody. So the Bible tells you in verse 3, 
For so are fulfilled the days of those which were in bond, because not everybody could be in bond. It was a privilege that was given for a certain class of people. And Joseph commanded the physician to do that. And when they did that, now the signs of embalming was the signs, like the prophet said, to make the body look the same. In other words, to cancel the effect of time over the body by using science. But without putting life in it because science can never put life. But yet it was a type of God being able to hold the body without time having effect on the body. Which in the positive is really a mystery of the body change. Because when your body is changed, the quickening power changes you. Time will no longer affect the body. Aging will be canceled and mortality will be canceled. You remain the same forever, which is the mystery of the change. Are you with me? So this is why it came by commandment of Joseph because Joseph is like Christ. And Christ in that position, when his father died, he said, this must be done for him. Because you're not just Jacob dying. Remember, Jacob and Joseph in the last book the last part of the book of Genesis is like the father and the son. Yes. Because Jacob, when he saw Joseph, he said, who are these two? He said, these are my son. And Jacob told Joseph, he said, your son are my son. In other words, I become the father of your children as much as you're a father of them. Yes. That mystery was to show to us that the father and the son was the same. Yes. That is why when Jacob died, Joseph, the only one of the brethren, fell on his face because the love that united them, being the last son, there was a special bond between the father and the son, which is his, the eleventh son of Jacob. So when he's dying now, J Joseph being like Christ, the head of the world at that time, yes. apart from Pharaoh, yes. because Pharaoh will be considered like God. Yes. Yes. Don't get cramped into your human mind yes. because the word is of compound meaning. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. And you're an eagle, you can fly. Yes. No, no, you're a UFO, you can fly. Yes. The prophet said UFO can change direction without slowing down, amen? Yes. And they don't get lost. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So the prophet said, I called my son out of Egypt. God called Israel out of Egypt and killed Pharaoh. Is that correct? Is that true? Yes. When the same scripture was applied for Jesus, God took Jesus out of Palestine to send him to Egypt so he's protected and Aaron doesn't kill him. Yes. The same scripture applied into crossing ways. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Hello? Yes. If you're tired, I'll stop and go. <laughs> so the mystery of embalming, which is the first time in the book of Genesis, is put in the last chapter, is by the command of Joseph, and it's over the physician because science now has been given an ability, as the prophet said, they could embalm and they can build the pyramid. Yeah. Now the mystery of the pyramid is Enoch built it, but there's a part of it that was supernatural that he not built, but he became. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. So the embalming was holding a mystery that they can make the body look the same, canceling the effect of death, but yet, because there was science, death was still present. There is no power to bring back life. But when our Joseph came, our real Joseph came, Jesus Christ, they let death come to him. When the woman come, they try to embalm him. They said, no, he does not need that. He does not need the spices, the mirror, and all these things. Because there was a power on the inside of him. He had the power to lay down his life. And the power was the center to raise it up. But yet with the signs of Egypt, God was giving them of that exodus an assurance that, keep this here, because one day Joseph told them, very soon, do I bury my father with great pomp? You don't have to do that for me. Keep me here to remind you that one of these days you're going out. Because me being one generation, my son being the next one, my grandson being the third one, yes. and my great-grandson being the fourth one, it's very soon, because God has sent the fourth generation, I'm going to take you out. Yes. So you don't have to take me back and bury me, but hold on to this, because this is reminding you, though I'm dead, yes. and I'm going back as a dead man, but you all are going back alive. Yes. Are you with me? You all are going back alive. This is a sure proof by the signs of Egypt that we are going back alive. 
Are you with me? Because that was pointing to this exodus. That's why it's in the last chapter of the book of Genesis. Because the embalming is a scientific imitation of the body change. But God is giving them the key. Just like Enoch walked with God. Built the pyramid. Put all the measure. Give us all the word. But there was a secret that was in him. That he knew that I cannot write this. I cannot put it out there. But I can take the mystery of the going. In my secret fellowship, God can tell me, hey, it becometh first to fulfill all righteousness. Walk with me, and one of these days, I'm taking you home. Amen. Enoch knew that, and his daughter asked him, Dad, are you going for an evening stroll? The prophet said, he said yes, but he knew he wasn't coming back. He was going to find the king's highway and move upward because he longed to fellowship with Adam. See? 57 years after the death of Adam, Enoch, which was the seventh from Adam, yes. couldn't take it. Because him and great-grandfather had so much yes. connection yes. that I want to say he was missing Adam. So 57 years later, he went up because Enoch walking with God was Enoch walking with the things that Adam was teaching him. Because Enoch and Adam lived together yes. for over 200 some years. God can't have two major prophets. As long as Adam was on the earth, all the word came to Adam. And Enoch, who was the seventh one, was so close to him by fellowship because he's the youngest there. Are you with me? Yeah. Just like Job, Jacob loved Joseph because he was the youngest son or the son of his old age. Adam loved Enoch because he was the seventh one. And he began to tell him, you know, I was in Eden. I was immortal. I had a body that could not suffer death. And one day, because we sinned and something happened, I lost my power. And God short-circuited the brain. Hello? Einstein, they say Einstein lose 10% of his brain capacity. Somebody like me maybe use 3%. But can you imagine if you can use 100% of your brain capacity? You don't know what this body will do if you can use 100% of your brain capacity because it was fearfully and wonderfully made. But God short-circuited the brain until things happen that oh, their whole body begins to condense into a mortal condition. But the quickening part that has come is to reconnect all the circuitry. Are you with me? And, and make a, a chemical explosion on the inside because you'll get a process in which blood will get canceled somehow. God has all that pre-designed by the message of the hour. And it's a more advanced science than the science of Egypt. It's a more advanced science than the science of Theodore Kipperman and the studio that he had. Because God designed you greater than a physical camera. You know that? If God allowed a physical camera to capture his presence, God who made you in his image and likeness designed you that so when the light of the world flashed across your path like the woman in the well, something inside of you captured it, not to flash but to hold it. And once you hold that light, it begins to change that soul. Amen. And the soul changes. And the more you stay in the presence of the light, there's something that is taking place. And one of these days, the process of chemical rearrangement will come to its full. And the quickening power that is in your mortal body will quicken this mortal body. But the power is already working in you. Because you're better than a camera. You design in the image of God. And when the light of the world flashes, God swims that down to be captured by your soul. And you have that image in you. And that image holds the perfect you that is 19 forever. And one of these days, when it accelerates the light inside, and that vibration of the word begins to move on the inside, you'll be more than jumping. It'll be something that will just burst the atom and change them because the chemistry is already working here. Because we have a greater evidence than the bones of Joseph. That pillar of light is greater than the bones of Joseph. And God gave us a picture. That same light, let me shock you, that same light that is over that head is in everyone here. That is believed and that is born again. If, if, Kipperman and Theodore were in the upper room where they one mind and one accord and they'd flush 120 times. They would have 120 pictures that look just like that one. Let's stand to our feet.
thank you for helping me with your faith, with your flow of expectation. I'm not a great preacher. You're a great believer because you have a pull and you have confidence so that God can use this unprofitable servant. Thank you. God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's been good to serve your people and to minister these few words of encouragement. Keep our eyes focused on this great exodus, Lord. We want to see everyone on that side. The prophet said, I saw you all there. You're speaking as a prophet with vision and revelation for his congregation, oh God. I pray that it applies here for each one of us, Father, because this word has come to us. His reality has returned to us. And we have a greater evidence, Lord, that what a camera can produce. Her soul, when the light flashed, could not help it. We responded there, God. Like the prophet said, a house on fire on a windy day was well, that woman at the wall. Because we heard from a theophany. We connected with the light from above. And it's changing us from glory unto glory. And one of these days, Lord, we'll put the final glory. Oh my God, we're longing for that hour. And we believe that oh God has Enoch longed to be with Adam and he stepped out into that place without tasting of death. Dear God, your prophet say, he found perfect love beyond the curtain of time. How that same love has to be in this dimension to reunite us with them, dear God. A connection of perfect love has to exist only in the elective promise. My God, as we saw even with the first Bible resurrection, that widow of Zarephath, she wanted a son so much back that she put so much pressure on Elijah. He said, did you come to bring my son? into remembrance. She won the right connection and resurrection came about, oh God. I pray that his word will ignite the fire in our soul because we see the end on every hand but we desire that our hearts may be lifted up toward you, toward the promise of the age, to walk with you like Enoch did and one of these days to step from mortal into mortality. Cause it to be a burning desire in everyone here today. We thank you that we can have this moment to bring this light across this sacred pulpit to God. Bless this assembly. Bless their vision. Bless them with inspiration, with direction, with continued ascension into your presence and your reality, my God. I thank you for this little expression today. Anointed for further development in every life, we pray we ask, we believe, and we receive in Jesus' mighty and holy name and for your sake alone. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. Bless the butter. Oh, praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. Press the battle. Press the battle. If you only know what lays on the other side, you will not walk. You would run. God bless you. Until.
leaving all the ones in the front, all the general, and coming back and finding all them weak ones, you know, and, 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 and anointing them for them to go forward. You know, Isaiah talk about the rare God. You know, where the rare God is the one where it's coming the back. You know, why they're trying to move on to the achievement. And the rare God is what is cut off the past. That the past would not hinder them because sometimes this Satan wants to attack to bring the condemnation to bring back your past and I will take the rare God, you know, to come there and, you know, you speak about the harmony, you know, I think when you think about the Lord, the greatness of the Lord descending and the small things, and today I was thinking, I say when you watch the harmony, the harmony between the Father and the Son, you know, one minute you see the Father appear on the mountain and say, 
This is my beloved son, yeah, him. And then you see the son say, not me that do the works is my father. And the both of them giving each other compliment. You know, to show the harmony that was existing between the father and son. And when Jesus came there, you know, he said, you will do the greater works. He never said, well, I come back inside of you and I will do the greater works. He said, you will do the greater works. And when the greater works was done, they said, by what name? He said, by, they say, by that name, Jesus Christ. When you have the Holy Spirit, you always give credit to the other person. You know, and he mentioned, he said, the Holy Spirit take him from Africa. You know, there, way down in the Congo, as last night he was giving his testimony. God called him at the age of nine years, reading the prophet message there. And all that was planned, you know, to take him here, bring him, you know, to, to, to America, then bring him to Canada. You know, have him to fall in love with a damsel from Trinidad. Our, our song instructor there. How much trouble we give her, Marvin and myself, trying to teach us to sing. When she realized we can't make it, she said, let move on the choir. <laughs> you know, and tonight, you know, to come here. And to those who don't know, Mrs. Stein lost it on right here. That is the mother of Jody and Babio. You know, she can give testimony. Is right here. We used to mind sheep. Her husband. You know, I used to be watching when God, these boys were small. And all in the back there was bush. And I used to be watching the sheep because I used to get $5 that evening to go and bring in the sheep. And here is where we used to be minding bringing in the sheep. So when you talk about shepherd in the hill country and all these things, you know, here is was a place where sheep used to be mined. You know, and when you see all that, you see the supernatural God just bringing all these things. You know, and God sent him to put even value on us and say, you all are special, which you all are just runs. And we see these things. You know, it's the wise men come in. When his brother sang there with his gift, his frankincense. He said, you are the super raised, the invincible army, all these things. That is the wise men coming with a gift to let us know. Regardless if they call you Absalom, they call you, you know, whatsoever. You hear the anointed Holy Spirit, you know, come to say, no, 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 you are just runs. You are special. Watch God take me from quite in the Congo to come and tell you all that. He said, you are special. You know, brothers, who we now meet for the first time, come and sing the first song and let us know how great this church. You know, that is an honor. We truly give God thanks for that. You know, by God's grace. The next thing that was striking to me is the woman in Memphis. She knew a part of the puzzle was missing. She had the boy and she knew she was the woman. But where is Elijah? Which means she discovered a part of the puzzle was missing. And how after 40 years we had discovered a part of the puzzle? Where is the boy? We have Elijah from 1946 to 1965. We had the woman from 1965 to, to, to 2019. And nobody asking for the other part of the puzzle. Where is the boy? She was there and she knew the boy was there. But no Elijah. We must have a young generation. It must have a young generation. And nobody never stand up and say, where is the boy? She knew a part of the puzzle must be fulfilled. And she grabbed the plane to get a part of the puzzle to be fulfilled. How much important for the bride... That's why there is a delay in the bride. Because this is the part of the puzzle that was missing. Because after this boy raised, he went to the 144,000 in 1 Kings 18. And restored the altar. And that is what God showed him. That is why he catch. And then the finishing part is Joseph bringing the two sons to Jacob. Genesis 48 and the prophet says crossing from Gentile to the, the Jews to the Gentile but these were two Gentile half Jew and half Gentile sons and Jacob type grace 
And the last thing that Jacob did in the gentle nation, among the gentle people, is crosses his hand. I'm putting the blessing upon Ephraim. And that is the time Joseph finds him. Let this one get it. And Jacob of the says, the Lord tell him to do it so. And after this half Jew and half Gentile, children were blessed. Then in Genesis 49, he went and blessed the 144,000. That is the 12 sons of Jacob. And Genesis 40, he died. That is what happening when time is running out. When you see these things is showing where the time is no longer. Time is no more delay. As you have a little few. If you have a little thing, you get in. Because after this, the gospel is closed off and go back to the 144,000. Time is not marked now by just, you know, how much years. Time is marked by fulfillment of prophecy. When we see this, we're happy to see God and we're just bringing this among us. It wasn't planned. You know, the Spirit just had liberty to speak. Here I heard our precious sister there. God always delivered her. You know, God chopped down a poem. Right down in her heart. There. Maybe after the service, before the service is done, she might come and say it. You know, we happy tonight. You know, always hearing about Brother George, Brother Ratan George, you know, Brother Claudie. Always our big brother, always talking about Brother George. Brother George married a couple of his children as well. You know, and get a chance to meet him and talk with him. And so happy to have him. You no know, brother did hear them have to leave because they had to catch the flight. You know, and well, hey, Sister Leslie, I'm still here. Praise God. Have faith. <laughs> yeah. You know, so before time run out, we we'll just want him to come and, you know, share something, you know, what he had, have and, you know, feel good. Feel free, Brother George. God bless you all, precious. Brother Pastor from Ephesians Tabernacle. Friend of Brother Daniel, very close friend to Brother Daniel. Amen. God bless you. It's not possible for me to tell you what is in my heart. <laughs> So I have too much things to talk about. Amen. But but at the end, I think thinking about it, the Lord will keep that plane grounded. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> but God bless you all. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. I mean, it's the first time being here with you. I always wanted to come. Be, you know, because of commitment, it was very difficult to really be here with you all. But if it's one time, Idul Fitter makes some sense is today. <laughs> So it gives me the privilege of being with you all here today. And I know that, you know, you have a wonderful pastor, a young man, in Brother Nigel. Honestly, I really know his, um, his, his relative, his brother, and, you know, like Sister Bernadette and Sister Petty and Brother Claudie. But I never knew that he had a, had a brother named Nigel. But, you know, meeting Nigel some time ago, it, you know, he tell me, tell me that it speaks volumes about him because it tells me that he's a man of good character. Only find one fault in this church is that if I have to come behind this pulpit, it wouldn't be appropriate. Too short. <laughs> Amen. But um, by the grace of the Lord, I, I appreciate being here, Sister Leslie, and I appreciate you too because, you know, some time ago they came in our church and I was preaching and I'm looking at them, somewhere on the right side there and I said, I feel I know that girl face, you know. I feel I know that girl face. And when she came up and sing, then I realized, I say, well, I know that girl. You know, and um, I love her singing. She's a very, very good singer. You know, she emphasized what she is doing. And I think listening to Brother Didier, I think they were, that is a very good comparison. <laughs> Amen. So, but by the grace of the Lord, I appreciate being here. And I would just like to say, you know, thinking about a few of the things that Brother Didier was talking about, you know, um, I really... I was thinking of, you know, the, the living re reality of the true and the living God. You know, Brother Abraham talk about he being the true and the living God, but there's a living reality that goes with this. So the reality of who he really is, is expressed all through the Bible. Take it from Genesis to Revelation, we would find where the mind of God is being expressed. 
And Brother Branham said there's a threefold purpose that is identify with the Lord in Christ, the mystery of God revealed. His intention is wife, husband, back to Eden. He wanted to have preeminence in his bride, which is the wife. He would reveal himself to the world in Christ, who is the husband. And he would restore the earth back to its Edenic condition. I don't think you could get a better person to talk these things than, than Brother Branham could have done it. You know, he did an excellent job in, in, in telling us a few things well, including, like for example, in 1954, Brother Branham preached a message called Melchizedek, the Great Prince. And if you were to look at that, you would see that Brother Branham was only talking about Melchizedek based on the history of his first and second pole experience. And when he talked about Melchizedek, the great prince, the type of things Brother Branham would be saying, then you would never imagine that there would be so many other things that could come afterwards when he would preach in 1965, February 21st, that um, who is this Melchizedek? Because he didn't quite know who was Melchizedek in 1954. By 1965, after marriage and divorce, now Brother Branham knew exactly who is this Melchizedek. And inside of that message, Brother Branham will say things like these. We have heard from our theophany is only the predestinated could be considered in redemption. In invisible union of the bride, 1965, Brother Branham will also come and say that the word is becoming flesh and the flesh is becoming word. Now, that is the reality of Christianity. Sometimes we think redemption is just getting saved. That might sound okay, but redemption is bringing us back to our original status. And to come back to our original status, we have to understand exactly what God is doing. The Lord is doing things in such a way, it might look like we are just ordinary people. Like for example, this is Mispa, which is the watchtower. But if you don't have eyes, it don't make sense to have a watchtower. Because you're on a, you're, you're on the, you're on a watchtower, and your eyes, which is the prophetic ministry, it what it what would tell you what what is coming in and what is going out. And we thank God for a young man who have proper eyesight, who is able to see what is coming in and what is going out. And you know, and Brother Didier was talking some things there, and I was thinking about you know, God, this great scientific mind. You know, like Brother Branham also said, plenty of places he said it, and he said God have three Bibles. The first Bible is the Zodiac. And every one of us identify in the scripture pattern of the Zodiac. Like every, everybody here, somebody must have been born in Virgo. That is scriptures. I mean, everybody might have a birth, but not everybody have a life. You might be born in Virgo or Libra or Scorpio or Sagittarius or Capricorn, but that is a word birth. That is elected coming under the first Bible. And Job used to read from the first Bible. Enoch used to read from the second Bible. That is by mathematics why he built a pyramid. And he gave you dimension by numbers. We just read from the third Bible. So Job read the first Bible. And many are like him in the patriarchal history. And Enoch read from the second Bible. We read from the third Bible. But Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. So we will find him anywhere we go in any one of the three Bibles. And you know what was very, very, it's not a coincidence. But if I could say it like this, Job broke in into God's laboratory. And he was able to see God, but from the first Bible. Enoch broke in into God's laboratory. And he was able to see God in the second Bible. We, because of the prophet, ministry breaks in into God's third Bible so that we would be able to see the same thing Enoch and Job knew because of the eyes from the watchtower and by God's grace we are thankful that we could see and we could say this that blessed is our eyes because they could see and I like to say something this half Jew that brother Didier was talking about called Albert Einstein. He, I see Sister Leslie, like she gone, so we don't want to fuss about if they will, we'll hold them back. So like they gone. So nobody here taking no flight. 
The only flight we're taking is what we had been in all the time. So the thing about it is that um, the Lord allowed this half Jew to break in into God's laboratory. In an age where God gave us a prophet. And Brother Branham preached the countdown message and he was saying, like justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the fullness by the word in his ministry. And he showed Luther. And he identified Luther to be horse and buggy. How many remember that? And Brother Branham made mention that science keep improving all the time. So from horse and buggy, it went into automobile. All right? Then from automobile, it went into aviation. From aviation, it went into the space shuttle, taking your way out, breaking the Earth atmosphere, going across the inner sphere, the stratosphere, everything, breaking into way up into the moon. And Brother Branham took that, which is the fourth part in science, and show us that we are, by God's grace, inside of an astronaut age. We are not down here with horse and buggy. We are not down here with cars. We are not down here with plane. But we break in into a dimension that takes us out of, as it were, into the Milky Ways. Amen? Amen? Now the thing about it is this, is that this half Jew, based on invisible union of the bride, and who is this Melchizedek? When Brother Branham said, we have heard from our tough theophany. Now listen carefully. The word was preached tonight. And as long as the word had been spoken, we are sitting here responding to the word. What is the word? The word is the theophany. Calling our names. Telling us who we are. So we are sitting there responding to the word so what is actually happening here is our flesh is connecting with our theophany because invisible beauty and brother Branham said the mystery plan is is that the flesh will become what the word theophany the question is where is that theophany and the theophany is becoming flesh so down here is inspired by up there and up there is inspired by down here. Down here need up there. And up there need down here. Down here is unfinished with the connection of the up there. And up there is unfinished without down here. So both of us have to become united. That is one of the teachings that Brother Branham gave to us. And inside of this scientific age, watch this carefully. This half Jew called Albert Einstein, he discovered... The law of relativity. All right? Listen, when everything was inside of dark ages, God brought energy in Luther. When everything was still paralyzed inside of justification, God brought more energy in Wesley. When things, Brother Branham said, when the Pentecostals saw the immoral lifestyle of the, the Wesley and the Lutheran is what caused them to get more energy, search for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then we now in our age is getting more than all of them, more energy. Watch what was discovered by Albert Einstein. The law of relativity is energy is equal to mass multiplied by the speed of light squared. Just think about that. What is energy? Brother Branham said there is something called the earthly glorified body, which is a combination of down here and up there. How many get what I'm saying? When down here and up there connect, then you have an earthly glorified body. That is what we're looking forward for. How many can say that? That is our redemption. That is our plan. That is where we're heading to. All right? So we're looking forward for when these bodies can be united with that theophany. The more you respond to the message of the hour, that is what the message comes for. To take control of our flesh 
and make us become united with our theophany. Outside of this message, no connection. Albert Einstein discovered that inside of the 19th century. In the 20th century, he died. And he has seen energy, which is really, from the spiritual standpoint, your earthly glorified body is equal to mass, which is our bodies, traveling faster than the speed of light, 196,000 miles per second squared. Traveling faster than the speed of light. If you can take matter, these bodies, and let it travel faster than the speed of light squared, you are equal to energy. Not even Albert Einstein understood that, but Brother Branham did. And Brother Branham said, he said, Albert Einstein said, two objects could be traveling, like for example a car, traveling faster than the speed of light because of the speed of the atom. It moves apart and they can pass through each other and don't touch. That is energy. But you have to travel fast. Look at the Lord Jesus. When he resurrected again on that Sunday morning, watch where he is rebuking his disciples. Two of them walking in the road to Emmaus. He said, oh fools. And slow travelers. Oh fools and slow of heart. You're operating too slow. <laughs> you have to speed up. You have to move faster. How fast? Faster than the speed of light. But Abraham said it took six hours to travel from Jerusalem to Emmaus. But it took them half an hour to reach back. Just think about that. So what are we saying? The reality of the true and the living God, the true and the living God comes in reality form. We are not ordinary people. We, but Abraham said we are special class of people. A class of people that cannot be compared with on this earth. Because remember it's two seed coming since Genesis chapter 3. We know which seed we are. How many can say amen? amen? We know which seed we are. We are indestructible germinal. That is what we are. Indestructible. We are predestinated. For what purpose? Remember who he foreknew. He predestinated. Who he predestinated he called to the message of the hour. When you came to the message of the hour, it means that you had been foreknown in the mind of God. And because of that, he predestinated you. And when he called you, after he called you, he justified you. Nothing wrong with you. But Abraham said, invisible union of the bride. He said, justify. I have not, never done it before. Never done what? This is why the Bible says, a son of God sinneth not because his seed. What? The indestructible germ of life dwelleth in you. Cannot be tampered with. Cannot be touched. God, God refused to recognize our first birth. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because we are predestinated for what? We are matter that will travel because the word came to us. Faster than the speed of light that is equal to energy. At the end of Albert Einstein's life. He discover a branch inside of the law of relativity. And you know what was that branch? Let me tell you what is it. Quantum mechanics. You children who just go to school and doing science, you would know this. Because God is the biggest scientist in have you. Know? The very first verse in the Bible is science. In the beginning, time. And Brother Abraham said, time, space, matter, electronics, hell, heaven in the presence of God seven dimensions so watch this in the beginning Genesis 1 when God is the biggest scientist in the beginning time physics 
God made the heaven, space, chemistry, and the earth matter. Time, space, matter, physics, chemistry, and biology. God is the biggest scientist. You cannot, you cannot confuse the God who we believe in with the mystery of what is happening in scriptures. Amen. How many can say amen? amen. And, 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 and Albert Einstein breaking into God's laboratory. If you are not qualified to go into that laboratory, you better stay out. <laughs> and that's what we are doing here right now based on the message of the hour. He breaking into God's laboratory. He come up with quantum mechanics. And here what he say. He say, in reality form, later on he will call it quantum reality. In reality form, he said there is a particle that is directly connected with you. That is thousands and thousands of light years apart from here. And when he began to see that you have another part of you, way out deep inside of light years and he said the secret is this when he began to see this that you mean something way out far out that you have to check take light years to pick up with it that that is directly connected with you down here and the thing about it they relate to each other they communicate with each other don't watch me strange. That is the word. God using science to show that this is reality. That he pick up with it and he realized that there's another particle that's connected with you. We out light years apart. And it is communicating with you. When Albert Einstein saw that, he said that is real spooky. He said that is spooky. His intention, he was afraid. He was a coward. Because if he didn't go and study it, he don't end up in the message. You get what I'm saying? If he didn't only study that, he would end up in the message. But he died thinking that that is spooky. What he calls spooky in 1923, or 2023, sorry, three scientists get Nobel Prize not because of quantum mechanics or quantum physics or quantum reality, but they went into quantum engineering. They, they also were afraid and they went down the next direction. They produced the computer age that we have in the kind of technology that we have available in quantum electronics. But let me tell you something. You know what they're afraid to go into? Brother Branham and who is this Melchizedek is telling us that we have heard from our theophany a particle that is millions of light years apart that a particle down here is connecting with that particle you are hearing from your theophany your flesh is becoming the word and your word is becoming your flesh quantum reality how many could say amen and that is who we are. This message. Let me say something before I go. One more thing. I tell you, I can't talk my heart. But in, in quantum reality, I like to say this. That is only we alone. But the brother had two parts of his ministry. In trying to do God a service, two parts of his ministry. Years of preparation. And a lot of people get trapped inside of that. And in years of preparation, it had first pull, it had second pull. They could tell you God sent a prophet. They know where's the forbidden fruit. You get what I'm saying? They know who is the prophet. They know about plenty of things they know. But then, but Abraham said the second stage of his ministry is beyond years of preparation. Is when he begin to sound. And many people today. This is why you need eyes on the watchtower. Not to only preach years of preparation. That's why a lot of people get trapped inside that era. And they think they're in the message. They get trapped in years of preparation. But this is when he begins to sing. What is this all about? The word was meant.
to bring us to our perfection. This is so serious. This is a quantum relationship between the word, which is the theophany, and the flesh who sit down and listen to it. The more we hear the word, is more the word we become. Flesh is becoming word, and word is becoming flesh. Last thing, watch what the devil is doing with the fivefold ministry in this hour. He's destroying it. Because he knows that the fivefold ministry is qualified to perfect the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God, not carried away by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking what the truth, what is truth, the word. Speaking the truth in love that we may grow up into him. So we'll talk again. God bless you. God bless you, my precious brother. We had a discussion last night about the pulpit with you. So, <laughs> so he was really aware of the pulpit and we're truly glad for such you know, encouragement again. And you know, when you see what he's saying there is Sunday when we came and we preach about God hunting for scientists in the zero hour. He ain't know nothing about that. God hunts for spiritual scientists in this zero hour. I wanted to say it Sunday, but I will say it one time as you speak on that. When I pre preached that Sunday gone, the Monday morning, Michael sent a photo for me, my brother Michael Peters. And the photo that he sent is April the 13th, 1984. Brother Vin preach, end time into the zero hour. And Michael showing 40 years after, the same April month, and I cut the service to come back and preach the part two because we had the other meeting Sunday. So Saturday will be the 13th, and the same April month, 2024, we're preaching now, God looking for Santos in the zero hour. Because we're not end time the zero hour, we're in the zero hour. And I will go out hunting for these scientists to do what, as you, really, as you rightly said, to bring the fragmented body together. I take chemicals of the world because the fivefold ministry that had been there for 40 years, you see how the people still divided. So God hunting these scientists who can take that world and bring the fragmented body back together and produce that church without spot and without wrinkle. After 40 years, God hunting a generation to achieve that. Glory. And when we see these things, we want to just give God thanks. Because it's God. All, all what he's speaking there is showing God and scientists. And if, if we say God choose you to be a scientist, he, he releases an anointing and start to do you know, your, research, your research as a scientist. Because when God hunts you, Say when you when you conquer a nation, what do kings look for? What do, you, what, do you, what do they look for? They look for the men in science and mathematics and these things. And when God conquer you, you know by re, by redemption through His blood, He know you have science inside of you, where you have power translation, where people can walk in the shadow and get healed. That is that is science. So we want to give God thanks for that. And as the song leader come, brother Ruben, I can take on here and here again, brother. Every time my wife will is enjoy listening to your songs, you know, and we truly feel happy to have you. You know, you like a, 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 a star when you come in here. We feel like a superstar you know, coming among us to sing. You want to take that guitar, we really appreciate you and we love you, brother. You know, God bless you. God bless you, brother Ruben. Where humility is, is still waiting, but I guess the believers want to hear it one more time. Amen. You all feel fine in his presence tonight? We really had a wonderful time hearing the word of God coming out of his servants. We really appreciate that. 
Brother Jonathan as well. All right, so God bless everyone one more time. All right, so um, you, know, you catch me off guard there. But um, I would sing a song that, you know, I, I wrote a couple of years ago. And, you know, I, I heard Brad Didier speaking on predestination. And then I heard the bra, brother Nigel came and spoke about it again. And then our pastor spoke speaking about it just now. So I'd, I'd sing a song that I wrote, and the, the title of the song is Predestination Controls Me. I'll tell you how I got this song. You know, I was reading the comics in the Express some years ago, and it had a cartoon named Buckles. It was a, it was a, with a dog, and he had the, his owner and whatnot. And the dog went and bite up everything in the house. And, you know, when, he, when the owner came home, he was going to beat him. And the dog stopped him. He said, don't beat me. He said, I was, I was destined to do that. That was part of my destiny. Even if you beat me, I couldn't stop doing it. I couldn't help it. It was, I was destined to do that. And when I read it, you know, I laugh, eh? But I remember Romans 8. And Romans 8 said, who he foreknew, he predestinate. And who he predestinate, he called. And who he called, he justified. And who he justified, he has already glorified. So I wrote a song on it, and I will sing it for you all. Way before the earth was formed, I was with you. In your mind, I was just a thought. I was not expressed yet, supposed to come through the regular line. But as God did allow, Adam went in the fall. But with a promise of a return, for there was one to come. He'd be God's only son, to bring us back where God and man are one. So I can't control my destiny. Predestination, it controls me. Election looks back to foreknowledge. Foreknowledge looks on to destiny. See, I don't need to worry. There's a seed inside of me. Please understand God's vocabulary. For God so loved me, sent the Son to die for me. On Golgotha's hill, on a Roman tree. For ordained in God's mind, certified on Calvary, a Gentile a warrior in God's army. You see, destiny is an agency that determines the course of events. It's foreordained, inevitable, irresistible in every sense. So when light struck the seed, the steep started calling me A strong desire to reconnect There's a house that's waiting, anticipating A reuniting for God's elect So I can't control my destiny Predestination, oh, it controls me Election looks fine for knowledge looks on to destiny See there's a charm of life way down inside of me Please understand God's vocabulary It's pulling me closer as the days get shorter To buy out a home sweet the orphan For a date in God's mind Certified on Calvary A Gentile a warrior In God's army looks back to foreknowledge Foreknowledge looks on to destiny See there's a germ of life way down inside of me Please understand God's vocabulary It's pulling me closer as the days get shorter To buy the home sweet the 
God bless you, saints. Um, sorry if we keep in all your back. I didn't know. Um, I have a poem for you guys. But I'd like to say a testimony before I tell it to you guys. Um, so while Brother Didier was preaching, I was sitting next to Faye, um, listening as I should. And all of a sudden, I felt something came over me. At the time, I knew it was something, but I didn't know it was something. So I, all of a sudden, words just start to come out in my head. And I was sitting there, and I was like, what? So I start typing on my phone and writing all these words coming off of my head. And when I finished, I was like, wait a minute, what? So I turned to Faye and I was like, Faye, all of a sudden words just come. And I started to write some, a poem out of nowhere. And I was like, what? So when she told me, she turned to me and she was like, that's the Holy Spirit. And I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> so when I, I was gonna message daddy and when I messaged daddy, I was <laughs> I was thinking, should I tell him or should I not tell him if this this just all happened all of a sudden and that thing and if I could do it now because I was thinking if I should read it or let Sister Carol read because you know she could read. And I was thinking should I read it or should I let her read it? And then some, something came, came over me again. And it, it was the Holy Spirit. And it, and it told me again, I should read it. And I, get, I start to get nervous, of course. Because knowing me, God has used me in a lot of ways. But this way was very unexpected. Because I'm normally a singer for the ministry in this church. And... I wrote a poem, which I know you don't do. So I, I was telling daddy, and he told me he not sure if I'll be able to do it because, I, you know. And I was like, okay, I'll do it another time. And then all of a sudden, I got a message saying, go outside, brother Michael wants to talk to you. And I was like, okay. So I knew God really wanted me to come here and say the poem. So when I reach and he told me, he thought it was a song, so he brought it guitar, but I told him it was a poem. And when I told him, he was like, I told him I was nervous and he told me, I shouldn't be nervous. I should come and say it with the same anointing that came over me, the Holy Spirit that came over me to wrote, write this poem. So I was like, oh, okay. And I did. I came, I came here and I went back in my seat, I was sitting next to Faye, and when Brother George came here, and he started saying about zodiac signs, he came and said, Virgo, and that is my birth sign. And I was like, oh my 
gosh, Lord really want me to come here and say this thing. And all of a sudden, I was, Faith turned to me and I was like, God really wants you to come and say this poem because he just said it to the next time. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really have to come and do it. And I say, yes, I have to do it. So here I am. Uh, <laughs> please forgive me if I make mistakes because I don't do it. Um, the name of the poem is called Come Follow Me. Come follow me. Come follow me. Little lamb, for I prepared a way for you. Come follow me, for I hear your cries. Trust me, I do. Come follow me, for I hear your prayers. Trust me, I do. So come follow me, come follow me, little lamb. You shall meet me soon. God bless you guys. Thank you. This is my second daughter, this girl. When we at home, she don't speak at all. She's very quiet. Every time, uh, very, the very few times Maya would come in front here, I just watch her in amazement because it's like, at home, she would have nothing to say. Very quiet, not outspoken. But when I hear her talk like that, I know it has to be God dealing with her heart. And I mean, it was all, always the, the, the desire to see the children grow up in the way of the Lord, so it's, it's good to know that the Lord is dealing with them and, and he's made a way, created an environment, a place where they could come back and, and honor him with whatever he, the, the little bit he has given to them, amen? So grateful for that. So just before we get ready to go, I just want to ask Sister Kim to come and do a song for us, and then we'll have Brother John Smith as we get ready to go. Sister Kim? God bless you tonight. God is great, amen. I truly appreciate his presence tonight. I appreciated all his songs and just singing this song. I trust that it bless your heart tonight, amen. you 
go farther. I'll fight till all my breaches are mended. I'll not let you go farther. I'll fight till all my breaches are mended. Bride of Christ, I know sometimes you lose. You're about to cry, but now in the cycle, watch all your mountains crumble. Mix the anointed word with faith. Apply the blood, it's the only way a case can be fortified. On this bread and wine, no more room for sin. Resisting power flows from within, and we'll go marching with shoutings of victory as we're headed to glory. So here. I our salvation that when you are returned to Zion you shall find a bride risen out of the ashes spotless virtuous marching onward Christian soldiers a risen Jerusalem Lord claiming our healing claiming our deliverance claiming your peace Lord no more captivity no more mind battles. This is your revival, Father. This is your victory, Lord. And we are living in the happening in the Lord. Oh God, how we appreciate you tonight, Lord. And we pray that you fill our hearts and you fill our lives with joy and love, Lord. A risen Jerusalem, Father. Let's lift up the hand. strong and work for I am with you I'm with you in St. Vincent and St. Lucia Tobago, St. Kitts, Grenada Dominica not forgetting Guyana and we're here we're all part of Mount Zion Determined to take us higher Keep that mamba Tongue in the fire Here I am, Lord On my knees Asking for strength Just one touch from thee I can 
cannot sing his song no lord down there in babylon but i'm gonna find certain them the lord god of hosts is in command i'll not let you go far i'll fight till my future go far I'll fight till all my beaches are mended I'll keep holding on I'll not let you go far I'll fight till all my beaches are Great things, Lord God, you have for us, Lord God. Lord, you move and you minister heart, Lord God, to place us, Lord God, Father, in the right position. That we can receive the things, Lord God, we have expectation for, Lord God. Deliverance to our soul, Lord God, Father. Encouragement, Lord God, to move on higher, Lord God, Father. To have the objectives, Lord God, Father, to press closer to you, Lord God. Lord, you even move on the hearts of individuals, Lord God, Father, to bring them closer to you, Lord God, by giving them poems, Lord God, songs to sing, Lord God, Father. And Lord, we are thankful here to see everyone, Lord God, being encouraged, Lord God, to continue, Lord God, pressing this battle, Lord God, Father, to see you bring change in our lives, Lord Father. Lord, and we come to this and Lord God, Father, Lord, how we desire, Lord God, Father, you go with us. Keep us in the way, Lord. Keep our minds, Lord God, and the things, Lord God, Father, that you have spoken to us, Lord God, Father, tonight, Lord God. May we continue, Lord God, Father, and at such another time, Lord God, that we could come in your presence, Lord God. May you take everyone, Lord God, the strangers, the visitors, Lord God, our brothers and sisters, Lord God, Father, in the region and all these other places, Lord. May you have your own sweet way, Lord. Father, take us safe. Lord, we ask this blessing in Jesus' precious name. Before you all leave, we have some refreshments for everyone, and we request that you all enjoy the balance of the night. Okay?
Waiting for that moment 